Thank you very much, and a good evening from Sergeant Bluff Luton Elementary School here in Sergeant Bluff, Iowa, for this regional semifinal and regional finals here on 95.7 FM, and also live video stream at WesternIowaToday.com. We've got Bill Saluk behind the lenses here tonight. Three cameras going, make it four. Cody Weaver, our play-by-play -play guy, with us. We're getting set for high school wrestling. Atlantic and Boyd, Whole Rock Valley, the Trojans, and the Nighthawks will square off first, and the winner will wrestle Sergeant Bluff Luton for a trip to the state dual tournament this Saturday in Coralville. Broadcast are brought to you by Olson's Outdoor Power, your one stop service and equipment shop, locations in Atlantic and Carroll. Also brought to you by the First Whitney Bank, they're the only bank you'll ever need, a First Whitney Bank. Body Basic, call 254 Body to get your body back to the basics. And the Seed Pros, so by your side to maximize yields from the word go. Your Pioneer Pros, John Becker, Mark Venn, Tiger, Gary Denkla, and Nick Knudsen. Also brought to you by Second Street Auto, your transmission pros. And Cass Health, the neighbors caring for neighbors. Outfitters Plus Outlet Store, your home for personalized sports apparel in Atlantic. And the Super Bowl, grab the gang and head to the Super Bowl for Globe Bowling every Friday and a Saturday night. Swita, they're safe, they're reliable. Swita, for all your transportation needs. And Stein Seed, as Stein has yield, contact Darren Petty and Trey Bricks, your local Stein representatives. And hy -Vee, bakery, deli, grocery, meat department, and pharmacy, always there for you, your Atlantic hy -Vee. Community First Credit Union, your community credit union, grow with us in Atlantic Ag and Auto, your locally owned full line car quest store in Atlantic. We're going to take a two minute break. We'll be back with more pre match coverage on 95.7 FM and live video streamed on westerniowatoday.com. Go to the video and click KS957. When you go home, you'll feel good about what you did, and you know, you're doing it for the kids. If they don't have us, they don't have these games. When you need parts or tools for your shop, you'll find it at CarQuest and Atlantic Ag and Auto, your only locally owned parts resource in Atlantic. We have shop air compressors, tools, air tanks, and welding supplies. We can make hydraulic hoses in-house in minutes. As the cold weather takes its toll on engine batteries, we have in stock batteries for big cats to cub cadets. We can get you started. Before or after hours, Atlantic Ag and Auto is your full-service CarQuest parts store. We're on the corner of 7th Street, across from the Lindemann Tractor, and here to serve you, the customer. We're back and ready to hand out more scholarship money in 2023. Community First Credit Union is awarding $50,000 in scholarships to our members who are planning to attend college or vocational school this fall. If that's you, apply today by visiting cfirstcu.com for a chance to earn free money towards your education. Deadline to submit your application is February 15th. Community First Credit Union is federally insured by the NCUA. John here from Atlantic IV. I just wanted to thank Atlantic and the surrounding communities for allowing us to serve your meat, grocery, floral, and pharmacy needs. You can be sure that we are working hard looking for deals to save you money on your groceries and at the pump. Thanks again from all of us here at your Atlantic IV for allowing us to serve your meat, grocery, floral, and pharmacy needs. And we'll see you soon. To a Sergeant Bluff. And Sergeant Bluff Luton Elementary School, but this is pretty nice gym here, Cody Weaver, uh, for a, uh, an elementary school. And, and I remembered I was here for a basketball uh, here, I believe, a year ago or so. So we've been here and have done that. Atlantic and Boyden Hole Rock Valley, the Nighthawks will match up first, and the winner will uh, wrestle Sergeant Bluff Luton again, as I mentioned, for a trip to the state tournament. Atlantic comes into uh, the match with a 16th ranking. Boyden Hole Rock Valley is rated a 20th. Other matchups here tonight in class a two way. We do have a Creston hosting. Glenwood will wrestle Albia, and the winner wrestles Creston. Creston is fifth in the uh, state rankings. Glenwood is 14th. 
And then Humboldt, the 12th ranked winner set, takes on a Ballard in the semifinals. And the winner of that will match up against Humboldt for the finals. They're wrestling that up in Humboldt here uh, this evening. That's a pretty good jaunt for winner set, huh, Cody Weaver? And uh, welcome back to broadcast. Another great night of wrestling here. And this is uh, postseason time. And a regional semifinal, your thoughts on the Trojans and Boyd Hold Rock Valley coming to this one? You know, I, I think you'll probably see um, solid lineups by both. Uh, you, you know, a lot of the dual teams get through the season by having a full lineup um, and winning forfeit. So the determination, I guess, between this is going to be who can win the toss up matches or score the most bonus points uh, when, is what it's going to come down to. Uh, so you look for uh, bonus points, you know, from the Trojans and uh, avoid giving those bonus points up um, if you are going to end up losing and just battle, you know, to the end. And then, you know, the winner will take on Sergeant Bluff Luton. You know, we've got the lineups here and the Nighthawks have 132 looks like it's open for them. But that they do have a, a Taylor Soul and a, a Carson Hugadorn that could maybe drop down to that weight. Not sure how that'll go, but otherwise the Atlantic has a full lineup for Boyden Hole Rock Valley. They've got uh, Luis Tomas, Gabino Vargas, Juan Rubacaba, also Ingel Gasca. That's 106, 113 is Vargas. Uh, Rubacata is 120, Gasca 126. Then we don't see anybody listed at 32 on their program. Logan Seabreck is at 38, Brock Mulder at 45. At 152, Colby Harmson, 160, Zach Struby. 182, Jace Mulder, 170, Isaac Van Beek. 195 is uh, Kevin Quijada. At 220, we have Reagan Mawson. And at 285, Jesue Garcia. That's the lineup for Boyden Hole Rock Valley. Now, run down Atlantic here, Cody. And uh, you're going to talk about these individuals because I'll tell you what a run in that Hawkeye 10 conference. A runner-up finish. They were wrestling pretty good. Yeah, I think if you start at the bottom of the order there, 106, you got Braxton Haas, just a freshman. You know, early in the season, you saw him and Tay Jordan kind of switch spots there. It was pretty even. And, uh, you know, Coach Duff does a nice job. Uh, you know, the best wrestler that week gets to wrestle the spot. And yeah. it's a true wrestle off. So you're doing the best two out of three matches. Uh, so it's it's not a namesake or it's not anything. You earn that spot and you wrestle for that spot. So Braxton will come out. He was a Hawkeye 10 champ here this last weekend. Um, you know, he looks, Jace Curry's a name that's, a uh, Curry name is familiar at Sergeant Bluff Luton. Uh, don't know much about Boyd and Hole Rock as they're quite a ways away, but Braxton's really come on the last part of the season here, wrestling strong, so I'm sure he will compete, you know, well. And then you jump up to 113, uh, which is the weight that we're going to start at tonight for this first duel. And you've got Aiden Smith, you know, a returning state place winner. Um, successful very successful youth career wrestled uh, you know all over from Oklahoma to Vegas to everywhere you know in his youth and and continues that's you know he does other other things but uh, you know races sport compact cars and they're modified in the <laughs> summer but his yeah. biggest thing is wrestling and um, he's a very competitive kid and a competitor so he'll compete well Josh Har uh, Haas there at 120 you know, had a, a pretty decent Hawkeye 10. Uh, D'Artanian Hansen, you know, has improved a lot from the beginning of the season. Still not a lot of experience as a varsity wrestler, but, you know, big improvements on his feet as well as on the mat uh, out of D'Artanian there at 126. Jaden Cox, you know, he came out last year, I believe, as a junior. Uh, another kid that's, you know, probably felt a lot of pressure as a kid having two brothers <laughs> yeah. that were yeah. wrestled at a high level and wrestled in college. Yeah. And he's improved a lot. He's a scrappy kid. He's a kid that's not going to give up. And hopefully he's going to make people pay for him having to cut a lot of weight to get to 132. So uh, you jump up to 138, you've got Easton O'Brien, you know, with, uh, state qualifier, multi-year state uh, qualifier has some bigger goals, I guess, you know, this year to place and place in the top, you know, four or five. Uh, then you jump up to 145 and it's the Tyson in the middle, uh, the younger Tyson stuck in between the two seniors. But, you know, he's really come on good, looks good on his feet. 152, you've got Tanner O'Brien. Um, you know, battled, you know, started about three years in varsity. And then at 160, we've got Brent Masker listed here. And, um, 
you know, he's wrestled some varsity here, but a lot of JV experience, and he's uh, looks good on his upper feet or upper body here throwing. Brendan Casey at 182, um, state qualifier last year. Jared Armstrong at 170. And at 195, I think you'll see Cohen Bruce. 220 got Miles Mundorf, and then 285 Evan Sorensen. You bet. We're going to take a one minute timeout. We'll be back right after these at 95.7 FM. As busy as we all seem to be. Partner with the undisputed leader in Enlist E3 Soybean Genetics. With exceptional yield and value, neighbor friendly weed control, and more new elite genetics developed faster. Stein can help you maximize profits on every acre you plant. Discover yield plus experience with Stein Enlist E3 soybeans. Learn more at steinseed.com. Stein has yield. Contact Trey Bricks at 249-2503. Gas prices got you down? Need a ride to work or the grocery store? There's public transportation for everyone in Southwest Iowa. SWIDA offers taxi service in Atlantic, Glenwood, Harlan, Missouri Valley, Red Oak, and Shenandoah. $2.50 each way or $2 for seniors 60 years and older. Just call 1-800-842-8065 or visit SWIDA.com to schedule your ride. Five point seven is KSWI Atlantic, a proud part of Meredith Communications. KS ninety five point seven. Welcome back to Sarge Bluff Elementary School here in Sarge Bluff Lute Community School District. Tom Robinson alongside Cody Weaver as the Atlantic Trojans and Boyd Hole Rock Valley get set to match up in this regional dual semifinal. Then we kind of got those upper weights, Cody, with. Uh, Kaiser, Mundorf, and Sorensen, and uh, those guys, uh, they're going to be tough. But it's going to come down to bonus points, I think, like a lot of these close matchups uh, do. And I think that's what really helped Atlantic uh, when they uh, finished second at Hawkeye 10 Conference on Saturday, scoring over 200 points. Yeah, they had a lot of uh, pens on the front side, and then the guys on the back side did a real good job competing and, and finishing here. Aiden Smith, Braxton Haas. Evan Sorensen will meet in the center of the mat and to shake hands. As Cody mentioned earlier, we're going to start at 113 pounds. Evan Sorensen, he's really come on at 285, really fun to watch. And sometimes he gets himself in some tough situations, but uh, we've seen him come out of them too, huh? He's the only one not panicking when he gets in <laughs> bad positions. Everybody else is worried that he's going to get trapped and caught, and he ends up somehow rolling through. And once he gets them on their back, he must have a real <laughs> tight squeeze and um, ends up usually with the pen so it's a kind of a pen or get penned situation but I think at 195 though this tonight I think you're going to see Cohen Bruce you know come out here um, you know a few varsity matches has wrestled some even last yeah. year so um, and then Miles Mundor you know put a lot of time in in the off season freestyle type competition and he'll be a, he's a steady wrestler very consistent Owen Bruce uh, wrestled that weight earlier this season as well as Coach Duff and his squad huddle around the head coach. And uh, Coach Duff has developed quite a program uh, for many, many years here. And, uh, of course, he's got that clock on the wall, the countdown to the state tournament. That's that his, his focus. And the uh, district's a little different this year. There's no sectionals. We'll have district meet on February the 11th. But we're going to get started here as we'll see who Atlantic will bring out. Braxton Hash. And we assume it's Luis Tomas uh, for uh, Boyden Hole Rock Valley, the Nighthawks, as we're going to get started here right on the button here at 6.01 p.m. Can't wait here, Cody, yeah, as we get started. Like, uh, they're at 1.13 here. They brought Bra uh, Josh Hass yeah, out. Has yeah, Josh Hass is out. At 1.13. Not, uh, yeah, Braxton's 106, so he'll end it. So, yeah, Hass. And it is Vargas uh, for Boyden Hole Rock. Okay, here. So Camino be Vargas. Here we go, Cody. 113, we're underway. Get collar tie there. Wrestlers separated now. Trying to feel out uh, where they're at, where they're, I mean, these are kids, you know, that haven't seen each other ever. Kind of a collar tie there, outside single shot there by Vargas. 
trying to switch to Fireman's. Catches that arm of Haas, trying to walk around here. Haas doing a good job getting back to his belly, kind of bellying out there. And right away, Vargas puts that left leg in, goes to the right leg, kind of a cross body ride there. You can see him pushing forward with his foot, trying to get Haas broken down there. Haas is going to sit down now. When you look at Vargas, uh, he finished first in the Siouxland Conference tournaments uh, here on the 28th, so he certainly has a, a lot of ability. Haas has a chance here, Cody. Yeah, he's Vargas is going to readjust there he goes. here, and he grabs uh, Haas. They're going to go out of bounds, so one versus two, so we're going to come back to the center, and, you know, he did a good job on, in the legs there, but he knew when to bail out and give up that jet one versus the two, so back on our feet here in the center. Two to one, Vargas with the advantage. Heavy on the head there, Haas is. With that left hand pushing down, Vargas pushing in. Now he goes right back to that, kind of that high crotch. Switches to a single here. Haas doing a good job with the hip pressure. Pushing that leg down. Now he reaches over the ankle here. Vargas is going to uh, kind of get broken down on his side here. And Haas trying to step over. You see him stepping with that left leg, trying to step over the ankle here. and. Vargas readjusts here, backs out of it, comes back up to his feet. Haas with the shot there, and Haas continued to drive forward here, and heard to come back to the center. So Haas is wrestling down away to 113, normally 120. Vargas, by the way, was a state qualifier a year ago, did not place, but you can tell he's been a seasoned junior at 113 pounds. Yeah, and, you know, Haas has so far has been really heavy on that head and was able to snap Vargas down there almost clear to the mat, uh, but not able to capitalize and come around behind there. So that'll be the end of the first period. It's 2-1 Vargas with that advantage. Will be Atlantic's choice here. He's going to defer. And Vargas, yeah, he'll take down here to start the second period. Vargas is down and set there in that bottom referee's position here. Haas covers on that left side right away, chops that left arm. Vargas clears that arm now, comes up to his feet here. Stays on his feet here. Haas switches to a single. Mm. Switches inside there, inside the crotch here, trying to lift him up. And uh, Vargas able to come back up to his knees here. Kind of a crab ride now. And Vargas kind of turns and faces here. Kind of trying to cast his hips over Haas there a little bit, but Haas did a good job moving in that same direction, keeping him from casting over. So Haas with the two on one on that left forearm here. Looks like he may be roll on a tilt here, and they're going to go out of bounds and come back to the center here with a minute 23 to go now. Well, he's been on top here for 37 seconds. See how long he can ride. I assume he's going to try to ride him out to get back points. Yeah, he's going to want to try to tilt him, and Vargas is going to want to try to escape There's here. There's a Gramby. Gramby by yeah. Vargas there, grabs that inside. Has, still has control here, though, and is nice going to take job. him back down yeah. there. Kind of drops him down. They're going to go out of bounds and come back to the center. Yeah, what can you say about Haas that time? He knew where he was at. Good balance that time and avoided the uh, escape. Yeah, and Vargas almost tried to, almost a standing switch there. Released it, and Haas right away dropped back down to that single. So see Haas working on that left arm again. Vargas kind of comes up to his feet here, and Haas hangs on that right leg. Vargas now up to his feet here, and Haas is going to want to try to take him back down. And Haas is getting a little bit in the high position here where Vargas can kind of almost come out the back here. Vargas is able to come up to his feet here. Haas picks him up, elevates him. Right away, Vargas comes up and uh, hits that Granby as he comes back down here. And Haas has a leg in here, but you can see Vargas is going to want to try to get that right arm through for that reversal. And Haas really needs to hold on here and avoid that with 27 to go here. And Best case scenario is yeah, a stalemate, stalemate there. And You're just going to call, yeah. Ooh, Haas uh, needs about 23 seconds here to ride him out, then he'll be on the bottom. Down two to one. And uh, right away, Haas in on that left arm again, chopping that arm, and Vargas kind of balled up here. Looks like he's got a chicken wing now on that left side, kind of loose. And you see Vargas kind of reach back and put it against that hip. Vargas comes up now to his feet, tries to turn and face. He's got to hang right on. Away. He's getting a little Four bit high seconds. here. And Haas is going to be able to ride him out, but it's going to be uh, pretty close to almost Ooh. reverse cradle there towards the end of that period. So 
be the third period here. It'll be Haas going down to that bottom position with that two to one, and he was uh, able to escape the first period, so he'll look to escape or switch here, and right away tries to stand up. There he is. Vargas is going to release him here, he feels comfortable on the feet. Two, two tie here, Cody. You see uh, Haas continuing to push, you know, and sooner or later they're going to call stalling on Vargas there. Um, as Haas continues to move forward. Now he needs to be aggressive as he comes forward, but not too aggressive where he allows Vargas in on a deep shot there where he can finish that shot. Again, Haas just continues to move forward. Underhook there by Vargas and control there. Uh, Good shot by Haas. Yeah, he's got to suck it, it in. You see Vargas so scooting his hips there, hurt, hooking that leg, and he's going to put him in a half here. Kind of got the legs locked up here, and he's going to say he's going to expose those shoulders if he can. You see him adjusting his right shoulder away from the mat a little bit. And he's really stretching ha uh, Haas out there, and he's pulling that arm clear over the top. And you see that a lot in yeah, college. Yeah, watch that, that arm. Yeah, but that's part of stretching it out. Yeah, and no, it's uh, too much, Cody. Yeah, they call it potentially dangerous. <laughs> Just give it one more little tug is what you want to do. <laughs> Four to two, though. Vargas gets two here. <laughs> yeah, but you'll expect to see Haas, you know, come right back up here, uh, up on his feet and make it a one-point match. And How about a reversal? And he could do it. You see Haas stepping over with that left leg, but as long it. as Vargas has that hand locked up on there, he's going to be able to hold on to it and be no points awarded. The best thing Haas could do here is put a near side cradle and lock his hands mm. and could get, could get a two-point there. That's what he's doing, Cody. And he's, uh, if he can get his hands locked here, he'll have control. He's got that leg. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. So it's a reversal there. And he's going to get some back here, trying to push in. He's got 20 seconds to go here. There he goes. And you see Vargas trying to roll through here. And Vargas. Oh. He got two, though. And Josh Hass is going to win this 6-4. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Yep. What a job. That was a great battle there by Haas. Um, you know, he just took his time there and was able to kind of get that near side cradle and did a good job getting ahead in the side and uh, was able to get Vargas kind of balled up a little bit there. You know, Cody, we talk about Evan Swartz about panicking. Haas did not. I mean, that was a great job of wrestling. He came down, stayed to qualify a year ago, and he did, moving down a weight class at 13. And what a job, what a start for Atlantic, 3 to nothing Trojans. Yeah, and you see right now they're playing the game of who you're sending out <laughs> on the mat. So it's uh, Boyd and Holrock's choice here. And so they have to send somebody out. And we're waiting. Uh, Aiden Smith is out there at 120. So. so Smith. But I don't know. I, I think, you know, at this point. You can only bump one weight class. I don't think you can bump two, so it'll be uh, Aiden Smith bumping up to 120 here. So Smith will wrestle at 120 pounds. And he's going to take on... Uh, it's Ron Rubicata. Ron Rubicaba will be wrestling Smith, and here we go. Atlantic up three to nothing. Smith and Rubicaba. And Rubicaba, you can see, is a little bit taller here, but Smith is always in good position. He likes that outside single there, picks that up right away, continues to drive in, needs to pull him back mm. on the mat here. And Rubicaba did a good job getting off the edge there, but, you know, Smith's got to feel comfortable that, hey, I was easy to get in there right away. Low ankle pick, circles that same direction, catches Rubicaba on his hip, is able to finish that takedown, now switches to a crab ride, ties up that left arm. You see him pulling on that. Now he goes chicken wing on the right side. He's going to circle the head here. Rubicaba really did a good job, though, coming up to his feet there. Uh, but Smith dropping right back down on that single. He goes on that same kind of direction, tipping his head down, uh, getting Rubicaba on his heels or on his rear there and able to come around behind here. So now he's working on a cross face cradle. He gets that locked up, sits back. And you see him putting that knee right in the side there, kind of kicking. He's using his feet to kick the opponent's ankle, Rubicaba, away there. And got a minute left to go here in the first period. Smith rolls him over, releases that. Should be able to get the points awarded here as he had that hand unlocked. So right away, he's going to go back to that same move, readjust here. He gets hip to hip. 
sits back. There he goes again. Oh boy. And he's going to. Uh, he's got this pretty good here. He, his uh, shoulder, Rubicaba's left shoulder is too far off, but he's going to get some tilt points. Three and again, more. you're going to want a pin here. So he bars that arm up right now. He's got 25 to go here. He reaches underneath there, trying to get the. Looks like an Air Force locked up here. Comes out front. Rubicaba circles the opposite direction, trying to come up to a base here. Smith gets it locked up, and this will be done if he gets him rolled over on his back with his, that wrist locked up. Mm. He's running out of time here. He's got five to go. Uh, so he's going to get three more. So it'll be 11-0 11, 11 here at the end of the first period. Well, Smith got the takedown for two. He put in a cradle in, got three back points. Another tilt for three more, and the tilt at the end, he was able to change his uh, pinning combinations and a, a big lead here for Aiden Smith, Cody. He's both started their feet here. Yeah, and I think it was Rubikaba's choice there, and he wanted to go neutral on his feet here. So right away, Smith with a takedown scramble position here by Rubikaba, and Smith hanging on to that leg and not allowing him to cross over. Now he keeps that leg, releases it, comes around behind here. Again, he's going to go back to that cross face cradle and gets that. He's got the left arm of Rubicaba locked up here, so he just needs to try to get him flat here. Uh, it's 13 0 here. Smith needs to settle in and get a pinning combination here. Mm. So that'll be the match. That's so that'll be 16 0 here with a minute 22 to go in the second period. It's Aiden Smith with your tech ball. What a performance by Smith wrestling up a lead. He had a takedown. And then he had a cradle, three back points, tilt, three back points, another tilt, three back points. He had nine back points in that first period and then got the takedown to make it 13 to nothing and finish things off with another cradle and back points. And Atlantic now on top here early by the score of eight to nothing with the three points from Josh Hastert at 113 over Gabino Vargas and now Aiden Smith over Juan Rubacaba by a tech fall, 16 nothing, Cody, as we go to 126 pounds. It's going to be uh, uh, Gosca for Boyd and Holrock and Dartini and Hansen there for Atlantic. Hansen with a near side cradle there. Uh, not able to get his hands locked up, separate now and come uh, in the circle here. Gosca with a heavy snap there. But Smith, or excuse me, not Smith, but gets in a scramble position here, and Ruby or Gaska able to cover him here on the left side. Tries to get a half in on that left side. Chopping that left arm. Drives forward here, has Hansen on his back. Readjusts now on that half, tightens that up a little bit. And it's going to be Gaska with the fall for Boyd and Holrock here at 126. So it's a 6-8 dual team score now. Those six points make a big difference. You know, Smith had five, Haas had three for our 18 points. So uh, Boyd and Holrock now has to show who they're going to wrestle here at 32. And if they don't show anybody, they do have a kid up here. They showed up in the program. In. Yeah, we'll see here. They've got... And we'll check that. 132 for Atlantic. They said, uh, I, I'm trying to listen to the crowd. I think they said Louise. <laughs> okay. But we'll see it, here. It's probably. Uh, it is Louise King okay, of Boyd and Rock and Cox of Atlantic. Eight to six. That pin was big for the Nighthawks. So collar tie there by Cox. Trying to snap here. Now he switches to the other side, front headlock here, gets kind of a near side cradle there, but release that comes around behind. Now he goes for cradle on the other side. He's going to sit back here. Oh, boy. Has King on his back, stacked up on his shoulders, and it's going to be Cox of Atlantic with a fall here at 132 pounds. <laughs> well, if you want to answer, you want to answer loud, and that's exactly what he did. Uh, Jaden Cox uh, with that cradle, boy, Atlantic. Russ is really good with that move, and the Trojans now go up 14 to 6. Gaska got the uh, pin at 126 for Boyden Hole Rock Valley, and then Jaden Cox comes out in a quick pin over uh, Luis King of the Nighthawks. We go to 138. Easton O'Brien comes out uh, for the uh, Trojans. Atlantic with uh, three wins out of the four matches. 
at 113. It's going to be Seabreck yep. for Boyd and Whole Rock. So Seabreck uh, versus Easton O'Brien. Wrestlers shake hands here. And Easton with collar tie there on that left side of Seabreck. Tries to snap that away. Another collar tie there. Separation now by the wrestlers. Still working in the center of the mat. Fireman's there, catches Seabreck on his back. Readjusts there, they did not get any points awarded. Um, he didn't stay covered long enough, but he's got a, he's got a cross face cradle on now, and you're gonna see that he's gonna try to push with that left foot and get him rolled over on his back. He should have two points awarded here. Um, but he did get a takedown here, but again, he's gotta get his hips up and get that left leg over the top of Seabreck so he doesn't cast his hips over here. And you see Seabreck trying to cast over there, and you see O'Brien trying to get his hips higher. Higher hips wins here in this position, and O'Brien trying to, ooh, kind of a power half here. O'Brien now goes inside again, kind of like a fireman's or high crotch here. No change of possession here, and Seabreck able to reverse him here and kind of goes for a tie in that left arm up. He's gonna try to elevate him and return him, and O'Brien's strong enough here. Pushes away and escapes. So we're back on our feet here, 3-2 right now. Seabreck with that advantage, 44 to go. First period here, Seabreck with an outside shot attempt. O'Brien with a slide-by attempt there. O'Brien in a position where he could do a super duck here um, and goes underneath, out of bounds. So, I just love your super well, duck. They call it a super duck because <laughs> you're going underneath the armpit trying to come out the back side. So. <laughs> O'Brien, a two-on-one on, on that left arm of Seabrack here, pushing into him. Tries to trip on that one side. Now he's going to go underhook right side of Seabrack. Again, he's down to about 18 seconds to go here in the first period. A snap there. O'Brien doing a good job using that head as part of his body part. You know, a slide by. Kind of tried to elbow pass there. Pulled him in here, and O'Brien's got to just bring him back down here. And... He catches him on his back, gonna get two points awarded here as time expired. So good job by Easton there on readjusting those hips, uh, getting those hips higher and took Seabreck down there at the end of the first period. So it's 5-2 now, uh, O'Brien with the lead. O'Brien goes down that bottom position here. You see Seabreck cover left side, reaches for that ankle right away. O'Brien kind of circles towards, comes up to his feet here. A whizzer mm. now by O'Brien releases that whizzer. Um, separation there by both of them. Back on their feet, minute 45 to go here, second period. 6-2 advantage now for O'Brien over Seabreck. Heavy on the head, you know, you see Easton quite a bit use that right hand to snap or sideways here. Uh, Seabreck did a nice job there blocking that. And O'Brien again with that trying to slide by attempt there. But he's got to get his hips. He's got to get that left leg hooked inside and over the body here. And it should be two, but he's there. It should be two there. Because he's got the inside the leg locked up. <laughs> there you go. He finally got it. I don't know what the official was looking at there. But usually if you get your leg inside the other leg there. But again, O'Brien kind of gets out front there and gets that right leg trapped by Seabreck there, another takedown by him, but now he's gonna see, he's gonna try to drive forward here. Get some back points here, catch the arm of Seabreck. And he's just gotta remember, I gotta keep scooting my hips here. And Seabreck's kind of loose here, uh, but O'Brien still has that right leg in here. And O'Brien reaches in between the cro uh, throat here, turns and faces, and Seabreck, knowing where he's at, rolled kind of right back to his stomach here, and you'll see O'Brien kind of settle back behind the hips there. Eight so, to two lead for O'Brien. Deep waist there by O'Brien on the left side. Now Cradle uh, doesn't look like he's quite able to lock it up. Oh Takes boy. it oh over boy. his back here for oh suicide boy. Cradle, which is always nerve wracking. <laughs> but it's because you're taking, you're putting yourself on your own back as you're rolling him to his back. But as long as your lock stays locked up, you're in pretty good position. You can see Seabreck there trying to peel hands and kind of elbow to the face and doing what he can do to get those hands, mm. that grip locked. And O'Brien did a good job. Three near fall there. So it's 11-2 now advantage for Easton O'Brien here at 138. Didn't quite have it, period. Cody. How, how, far, how close was he, though? He looked like he about had it cinched up. Yeah, and uh, Seabrook here, he, 
Yeah, it was pretty tight. Uh, his shoulder was still too far off, the near shoulder there. Seabreck chooses, uh, chooses neutral here in this third period, so just need to be careful not to get thrown. You know, stay in good position. Another mm. fireman's there. Nice. Takes Seabreck down, keeps him on his back here. And yeah, it's going to be a fall the right there. He's got the fall. Yeah. And that's a fall yeah. for Easton O'Brien there at 138. Oh so. 20-6 Atlantic. They've won all the matches so far, but one at 13-20. 32 and 38. Boyne Hole Rock Valley got a win 8 to 6 and a pin by Gasket at 126. But the Trojans off to a great start. And Tyson O'Brien comes out for Atlantic and talk about the Boyne Hole Rock Valley. Yeah, see who uh, they're both checked in now. So it's going to be Brock Mulder of uh, Boyd and Hole Rock. Mulder, just a freshman, uh, big, tall, lanky freshman. Uh, taking on Tyson O'Brien, sophomore here. So, Vladik up 20 to six. Uh, Mulder there with the collar tie. Both wrestlers, and you see Tyson going right side collar tie, left side collar tie. Then they separate here and collar tie. Maybe a little bit of a slide by attempt there, or elbow pass by Mulder. Trying to feel out each other here and. Tying the head up there, and so Brian's a kid that you know you see kind of work throughout the whole match and not get in a panic position at any point. Again, that slide by attempt, and then Mulder actually pulled the opposite direction there for a snap down, trying to keep off balance O'Brien from getting in on his feet. O'Brien with a single leg there, picks that single leg up, and you see Mulder trying to scoot his hips. Get a leg locked in, uh, continues to scoot. He's got that near side leg locked in. O'Brien gets still, and he's got to, O'Brien's got to get his right arm through here and continue to follow. Reach back here, turn and face. His right arm's got to get in between the stomach of Mulder. Turn his hips down. Turn his hips down. There he goes. Reach back, reach back for the head. He needs to reach back for the head and keep Mulder from spinning. You see him reach back there, and but Mulder, yeah. Mulder knew exactly where he was at there, cast his hips over and almost caught O'Brien on his uh, back there. But they're going to go out of bounds. 24 to go now, so good scramble for both of those guys. Uh, but uh, Mulder... Did a good job knowing where he was at there and got his hips in good position and was able to roll O'Brien over to his back. But no back points awarded. Going to be a caution Question. on Mulder there. A little bit of an early start before the whistle. We saw that multiple times on yeah, Saturday with the did. nerves that we had <laughs> going on. They're just anxious to go, Cody, I think. O'Brien will see if he can get an escape here. He's got to peel and go. And Mulder trying to do everything he can do to return him, and it should be at some point almost a stall call, but he's able to come back mm. to the mat. He's got the two-on-one on the left arm of O'Brien, and he's trying to tilt O'Brien up, but uh, Tyson did a good job, almost said Jason. I don't think Jason roll off of his back that fast. <laughs> but Tyson did a good job getting off of his back there and, you know, only getting a one count, so no back points awarded. <laughs> When O'Brien's you know, a, a big part of this team, you've got Tyson, Jason, and you got Easton. Easton, Tyson, and Tanner. <laughs> yeah, Not Tanner, Jason. There you go. I got Jason in <laughs> yeah, your brain right now. I got Jason right in my brain now. <laughs> Easton, Tyson, Tanner. So Mulder covers right side there. Uh, working on, you can see he's got a real deep waist. Wraps it clear around the side of Tyson. Tyson with the sit out there, turn yep. face. Yep. And again, Tyson's a kid that's going to continue to work throughout the whole match. Uh, strong kid. Um, kind of really his first year of RC, maybe some a little bit of experience last year, but has really improved throughout this year. And again, he's a kid that fights, and that's what you want. Starter on the football team is pass ball as well. Collar tie there by both wrestlers on the same side. You see Tyson uh, trying both there, and Mulder really tries that slide by attempt here, and he kind of gets O'Brien out of position, and, and Tyson did a great job there. Tyson did a great job there with that pass. Mulder a senior, Tyson just a sophomore, and he's hanging in there two to one here. 
both, you know, built very similar. Yeah, they uh, are. Molder's even probably a little bit taller, but see, he's got that slide by, puts that right leg in, uh, but Tyson doing a good job hand fighting inside there and not allowing any control there by Molder. So we're down under a minute now in the second period. It's 2-1. Mulder with the advantage. Um, O'Brien had that escape here in the second period. Another slide by pass there by Mulder. Both wrestlers are separated now in the center of the mat. A shot there by O'Brien. Oh boy, come on Again, around. they get in a scramble position here and Tyson's just gotta keep his base underneath him. Mulder's reaching over the top. He's gotta get his head off the side. Step with that outside leg and Mulder's doing a good job of kind of keeping him broken down flat here, but Tyson has to hold on to that leg. He scoots onto that leg now. And Mulder continues to work up here. Tyson trying to come out the back here, and he needs to separate the legs instead of tying them together. Turn and face. He needs a mule kick here, Cody, to get. He's going to be a. Uh... They're going to be a stalemate, or we're going to run out of time, actually. Yeah. There's two seconds left, so. We got your stalemate, and there's one tick on the clock. So we're going to come back to the center here for one second, and it'll be uh, Mulder's choice here in the third period. Mm. Well, I would assume he'll take down. Yeah, he looked at his coach, and that's yeah, yeah it's going to be him down. He's got one takedown of the match, and O'Brien with an escape. Tyson covers that left side. Kind of inside leg right and right away. Oh, boy. What a move, what a move by Mulder. Yeah, it's just a reversal there by Mulder. Kind of turned into a, a Saturday night ride where he was able to lock both legs in. And once you get in that position, um, he lifted Tyson's head up and exposed both shoulders and got the fall there. 20 to 12 now with that pin by Boydenhole Rock Valley. Atlantic wins matches at 113, 120, 32, and 38. And for Boyden Hole Rock Valley, Angel Gaskin with a pin at 126. And Brock Mulder pin at 145. The score 20 to 12. Atlantic with the lead. So we'll see who comes looks, out for Boyden Hole Rock yeah, Valley. It looks like they have about one choice, and that's Struby. But uh, Boy, Tyson wrestled well all the way. It's gonna just be, got caught there at the end. It's actually going to be a sophomore here at uh, the 152 is a uh, Villar of Boyd and Hole Rock. Well, Tanner O'Brien is out for Atlantic. O'Brien with a kind of a front headlock there. Now he goes outside the arm uh, and controls that arm. Now he goes back under hook, tries to snap Villar by here, has behind him, but he just needs to pick him up and return him. A great job there by Tanner. Uh, you know, elevating him, returning him to the mat. He's got that left arm now completely tied up on Villa. Villa reaching back with that right hand a little bit. And you can see Tanner working two on one on that left side, locks that left leg here and Villa trying to turn into him here. And, and Tanner's struggling to keep that hip up, you know, and he needs to go cross body a little bit more. There he goes, uses that leverage. But again, Villa continues to try to fight forward here. O'Brien needs to scoot back a little bit more on the hips there, and Villers up on his knees, one hand posted. He's grabbing, trying to grab Tice, or excuse me, Tanner's hand there. Tries to scoot here a little bit. Now Tanner reaches inside, trying to get that arm of Villers here. Goes to a power half, and again, that's uh, probably a good position for a stalemate, but they're going to go out of bounds and. Uh, Tanner had that left leg in there, and you know, Villar continued to try to work to that left side and did end up getting Tanner on his hip there on the left hip, uh, but they were out of bounds, so Tanner's got to do a better job of keeping his hips up off the mat. Two on one again uh, by O'Brien. He's got that right hand tied up. Now he goes left hand inside. You see Villar kind of turning ter uh, towards, and he's wanting, he's wanting, he's baiting that leg to get put in by by Tanner. Tanner elevates here and tries to roll him over, switches to a half now. Could stack him up here, needs to get off the side and kind of gets off balance a little bit there and uh, is able to cover back Villa again, but uh, goes deep waist. And Villa is a kid that just seems to keep turning into that leg. And again, O'Brien now has that left leg in and Villa continues to turn, 
trying to get that hip of O'Brien's down on the mat. So. Two nothing, uh, Tanner O'Brien with the lead over Avila. It'll be uh, Tanner's choice be here, Tanner's and he's going to go down that bottom position. He was thinking about uh, deferring, I think, and coach said, Dubs "No, just go down. Go down. And get, get You're going to do it now yeah. or later. He yep. might as well do it." Now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So Villar now with that left leg in, uh, we see that Tanner still with a good strong base there. Uh, mule kick gets that leg almost out there, and Villar there he's got the leg out. Now Villa reaches. Villar's in a high position here, and Tanner's trying to suck him underneath him here. He gets that leg out, and he's going to readjust, grab the head there, turns and faces, is going to catch Villar on his back here, pretty quick. He needs to continue to. Take his time here, get his right arm through. Needs to get his right arm between here. And you see O'Brien reaching with that it. right arm on that right shoulder. Continues to drive forward here and gets uh, Villar. I don't know how he's hanging on barely with that left leg <laughs> in. But again, now Tanner trying to come out the back door. You see the right leg out and he needs to put, take his hand up there and push and then get out that back door. But uh, Villar doing a good job. Must have the left shoulder of O'Brien's underneath there. And, now you see Tanner pushing that right side away and able to pop that head out and Gotta get some switches points. to a half here, jumps off the left side, goes in between the legs, needs to get him over chest to chest. He needs to get He's out to get the get side. There. there he goes, but Villar again, keeping that leg locked up. O'Brien's able to roll him over here and Got him. get the fall. That's a big one for Atlantic. The Trojans go up 26 to 12. <laughs> They've won all but two matches here for the first half a dozen. And Villa looks like he's shaken up a little bit. I think Tanner had a pretty tight down Anytime there. time you yeah. lose, it's always it's difficult, tough. Tom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good effort by Villa. But Atlantic now with uh, some big points there from Ty Tanner O'Brien. As we recap here, we started off at 113. Uh, Josh Haas of Atlantic uh, with a win over Gabina Vargas uh, by decision, 6-4. to four. That put Atlantic up 3 to nothing, And then Aiden Smith rousing up to 120, uh, defeated Juan uh, Rubacaba by a tech fall. And 239, 16 to nothing, made it 5 to 8 nothing Atlantic. And then the Nighthawks got a pin from Angel Gasca, and that squeezed the lead 8-6. to six. But the Trojans back-to-back -back wins. Jaden Cox pinned Luis King. Easton O'Brien with a pin over Logan Seabreck. And the Trojans uh, jumped out 12, 17, 20 uh, to six. Brock Boulder got a pin at 145 to make it 20 to 12. But then Tan O'Brien comes back with a pin to make it 26 to 12. The Atlantic with the lead it threw 152 pounds. Now we go to 160. Yeah, and I mean, if you uh, look at that match, um, this is a masker, and, and it is Struby here. Yep. Struby right away with the body lock, takes masker down. Uh, masker doing a good job getting back to his stomach here, but Struby working on chicken wing on the left side there. Now he's got the left arm tied up, and he's probably going to roll through here and try to get some tilt points. You see him locking that arm in, driving forward. He's still trying to get that chicken wing in on that left side here. So Struby in control here, uh, about 30 seconds into the first period here with that takedown. Has a chicken wing in, gonna tilt Masker over. Got the chicken wing in, deep waist on the right side. He's got the actual. It looks like they're gonna stop the match. So he got four near fall there because he stopped the match in a Potentially dangerous there. It's uh... so they're going to get uh, Trent going to get back up. He's about Struby. He, uh, he's the Siouxland Conference champion as well. They Boyd Hook Rock, Boyd Hull Rock Valley. That Siouxland Conference looks like the mask is going to be okay. It looked like <laughs> wasn't sure there for a while, but mask with that shoulder brace on is back. Down again and uh, down six to nothing here. Struby was the Siouxland Conference champion here on January 28th over the weekend. Yeah, it's six nothing right now. Um, Struby with that takedown had that chicken wing in on the left side, rolled Masker over. Masker complained of shoulder pain, so they stopped it. Um, but because they stopped it from pinning, it's a four point move there. And 
He rolls Masker flat over on his back again with the tilt position here. Uses his leg to stack up. There'll be three more near fall there. So it's gonna be nine nothing here. About 35 seconds left in the first period. And he's gonna keep that pinning combination. So he releases that now, goes near side cradle. Now he switches deep waist right side, chopping that left arm. And Struby trying to work on that left arm. He readjusts that deep waist on the right side. He uses his knee on the left leg of Masker. Tries to tilt Masker over and gets a couple more near fall there as Masker tries to reach back for a leg and expose his back. So it's going to be 11 zero right now at the end of the first period. Should be pretty impressive for the Nighthawks, Co uh, Cody. He'll be covered on yeah, top. Yeah, and he, uh, he's going to take the top position, <laughs> yeah, which you don't see very often. <laughs> That's confidence. Masker's down and set in that bottom position right away, tries standing up, and Struby chops that arm, continues to drive Masker forward here. Masker peeling the right side wrist out, uh, but has head on the mat. Still up on his knees there. Now left shoulder and head on the mat. And Struby continue, he's got that chicken wing in on that left side. And uh, he reaches in that opposite wrist here and he's gonna get out the left side and Masker kinda has the outside leg posted here. Trying to drive forward. Now he goes chicken wing right, half on the left, drops that. Trying to chop that arm and he's gonna work on rolling Masker over here. He readjusts, taking his time. Going to be near fall, and it looks like he's going to uh, settle in here. Keeps that chest. He's going to settle back chest and chest on himself here. Masker trying to roll through and not enough muscle there. And Struby's going to get the fall there with a minute three to go in the second period over Brent Masker of Atlantic. Well, that'll move the score to 26 to 18. Rock, Boyd Hall Rock Valley has only won three matches, but they've all been falls. And it's Zach Struby with the fall. Angel Gaska with a pin and Brock Molder with a pin. Atlantic up 26 to 12. They had wins at 13, 20, 32, 38. Dan O'Brien at 52. And then the Masker pinned by Jack Struby. We go to 170. <laughs> I'm just looking at Boyd and Holrock's weights and they go 160, 182, 170. So I'm trying to figure out it's going to be Armstrong and he's going to be taking on Van Beek. Uh, here at 170 pounds. Collar tie there. Slide by attempt there by Van Beek, and Van Beek uh, gets taken down by Mask, or excuse me, by Armstrong. They're going to go out of bounds, so Van Beek will go back down that bottom position. Position. Mask is going to cover left side here. Right away, inside thigh pry by Armstrong. Working on left side arm. You see Van Beek trying to stand up here. Right away, yeah. Masker, or excuse me, Armstrong tries to get him in the near side cradle. Van Beek does a good job extending out. Now he's working cross face cradle, it looks like, on that left side of Van Beek. Van Beek does a good job, keeps that leg locked, though, on Armstrong and keeps him from coming around here. So Armstrong now working left side two on one, comes out to the left side, and you see Van Beek. Kind of coming up to his knees here and really uh, doing a good job on the bottom, you know, keeping elbows in here and turning opposite direction and from a defensive standpoint, doing what he needs to do to avoid the cradle or avoid anything from happening. And Armstrong with that 2 0 advantage here, just under a minute to go in the first period. Can't uh, really get anything locked up or turned. Grabs the ankle now. And again, Van Beek really kind of turning away there. Long legged kid. Masker now, or excuse me, Armstrong now goes out front here. Kind of tries to bar up that arm. Come around the head here, and Van Beek just turns that opposite direction and doing defensively what he needs to do. Armstrong gets out to the side here now, reaches the hand here. Reaches the front arm, gonna walk around the head here, and Van Beek so far being strong here, and 
Mask or Armstrong can't. He, he can't get him turned. He can't get him turned. And again, Van Beek is doing what he needs to do. Well, stall. There's the power hand. Kind of stall from the bottom standpoint. And Boy, that's just... going to run out of time here as time expires in the first period. So two nothing here. Well, I tell you, give Van Beek credit there. Armstrong was cranking there on like a crescent wrench on a bolt. Yeah, and he couldn't, he couldn't get him uh, twisted. And uh, he needs a 12-point wrench instead of a crescent <laughs> wrench. He couldn't quite get it tight now. <laughs> well, he, he wasn't like the crescent slipped off. He, like you said, he couldn't. Uh, <laughs> you see the same thing happening to Armstrong, though. Uh -oh. Van Beek gets that oh, cradle lock. Oh, that's a suicide. Yeah, it's, uh, it wasn't a suicide there, but... Uh, <laughs> Armstrong did a good job kind of, him. you know, sitting back through, posting his arm, catching Van Beek on his back. And you can see Van Beek's doing everything he can do to stay off. And Armstrong is catching his breath here, and then he's going to go back through for another move. But Armstrong tightens that up. You see Van Beek Got trying him. to fight off of it, and Armstrong tightens it up and gets a fall here at 170 over Van Beek. Well, Van Beek, what a, he tried, and uh, a tall, lanky, uh, 170 pounder and a good job by Jared Armstrong. Atlantic, they needed a pin there. And uh, they go up 32 to 18. And Jared Armstrong with a pin. We've got six matches to go. 82, 95, two, or five matches to go. 82, 95, 220, 285, and 106. We come out at 182. So we saw at 145, we saw Brock Mulder, a right. freshman, and now we see yeah. Jace Mulder, assuming older brother here who's a senior, and he's going to take on Brendan Casey. Of, And it is Jace Mulder um, of Boyden Hull Rock. 32, 18, Atlantic with the lead. So Mulder with a kind of a slide by attempt or elbow pass there he has really has Casey's head tied up there and separation now by Casey goes right back into that collar tie working on wrist control that opposite wrist two on one now by Mulder on the left side of Casey separation there but collar tie still tied up Casey breaks that collar tie they separate. Casey likes that elbow pass there down to a single, and, and Mulder's got a real good collar tie on that same side, um, and Casey's not had any luck with that elbow pass there. Now he's got, Mulder's got an underhook on the left side, snap on the right side of the head, a little bit of separation here. And back to the collar ties. Collar tie by Casey. Now we got a kind of a pass there. Mulder doing what he can try to do here. He switches to Wizard now. He's got his leg inside of Casey's. Going to try to go backwards with him. They separate. Come back up on their, stay on their feet. Just some separation there. Casey continues to drive forward. Lowers his level here, and he's going to push Mulder out of bounds. So we're going to come back to the center here. And What's interesting about Mulder is... Boyd Hill Rock Valley, were, they were 1A two years ago, and he was sixth to have all the class of 1A 160-pound weight class. And I don't know if he didn't have an injury last year, didn't wrestle, but Mulder is a medal winner. Yeah, and he throws Casey yeah, right to his back. he's got a throw there. And Casey, I don't think, knew right where he was at no. in the beginning there. I think he you know, thought he was going to be okay there. And Mulder's out front now with that arm tied up and now switches back over, puts that right leg in, and he does kind of a... Gets the legs up there. Now he's going to go power half on the left side, working on cranking Casey's head down a little bit, trying to get some back exposure, but two near fall there. So two takedown, two near fall as the time expires there in the first period. So 4 nothing right now, Mulder of uh, Boyd and Holrock with the advantage. He's going to defer to the third period, and Casey wants to go back on his feet. So Casey's, uh, both wrestlers kind of right back in that same collar type position. Again, elbow pass attempt there by Casey. Down to a single. Separation now. Elbow pass, again, attempt there by Casey to a single. Elbow pass the other way. Mulder just doing a good job blocking forearm on the shoulder of Casey. You know, Casey continues to drive forward. Uh, but really hasn't done much for a level change there to get his legs in good enough position to finish a shot. And collar tie by both wrestlers. Wrist control. Now they switch collar tie sides. 
elbow pass attempt there by Casey again, and Casey's going to push him out of bounds, and pretty soon it'll be a stall call on Mulder as Casey continues to drive forward, and Mulder twice now is backed off the mat. Down to about a minute in the second period. 4 nothing now, Mulder with that advantage. Took Casey down the first period and, and caught him on his back there. I don't, it's just a matter of, like you mentioned earlier, Brennan didn't maybe know where he was at and got thrown. And Mulder's trying to circle yeah. here, and Casey's basically just pushing into him. Oh, a, there you go. A shot attempt there by Mulder. Catches Casey's leg underneath him here, but uh, Casey continues, does a good job yeah. trying to get his hips up here, but Mulder can't quite get his head out, gets that uh, head out, get two. keeps that leg yeah. of Casey's tied up, more. now releases that. So he gets two to go here with 25 to go, and you see him right away put that right leg in. Casey kind of leans, leans over, tries to reach down and unhook that leg out. Um, and Mulder's got that leg in deep on the right side. Casey comes up to his base here, and you see Mulder getting a little bit high here, and Casey's going to get that right arm out. And Mulder gives him one instead of two here, and there's going to be a stall call on Mulder here. So 6-1 right now. So we're going to go to the third period. It will be Mulder's choice here, and he's going to go down in that bottom position here. <clears throat> Lighting up 32 to 18. Be a caution on Mulder there, a little bit of a kind of coming up to his base here. Right away comes up to his feet here. Casey tries to drive forward. Mulder kind of tries a little bit of a Gramby here, and Casey's going to try to work that famous cradle he's got. Two on one on the left side of Mulder here. Mulder's head is down on the mat. Casey drives forward here, two on one. And there goes Casey on the far side cradle. Casey coming a little bit too far out front here, and you see Mulder grab that leg. Mm. Going to trip that knee yeah. underneath Casey here and continue to circle his hips here and get... Now he reaches with the left hand on Casey and grabs that knee, continues to circle here, but Mulder also goes down to his hip, so a minute 13 to go now. 6-1, Mulder with the advantage here. Mulder yep. continues to circle hips here and has the leg of Casey. Now you see him tying over here, and he catches Casey almost on his yeah, back. But Casey gets around the other side. Casey comes up. He's got to put those legs in. He's got two there, Cody. Uh, he had. He, he, he had, had the bob. He, right. Yeah, he started yeah. on top yeah. here, but he's trying to peel an arm out on Mulder here. 45 to go here. Mulder kind of comes up to his base here, head on the mat again. Casey continues to drive forward here, but really. There's a oh. stall call on Mulder. Casey has that cradle locked up, though. Oh, no. You he, see Mulder, Mulder keeps that it. leg yeah. here. Yeah. Casey bails out, yeah, uh, but uh, Mulder, Mulder locks in here and going to get two reversal and three near fall here, and he's kind of got a front headlock. Casey's in trouble here, and Mulder's going to bail out here. He's got 13 to go, readjust here, gets in a scramble position, and... Um, Kind of has hands in between the legs of Casey here, trying to keep out of trouble here. But it's 11 to 2, time expires, and Mulder with the advantage there, but he's wore out. <laughs> Mulder wins by major decision, 11 to 2, and that'll move the score to 32 22. Atlantic's lead is 10, and we have four matches to go. Bruce comes out of 195 for the Trojans. We have 220, 285, and then 106. And we'll see who the Nighthawks bring out to challenge uh, Bruce. But uh, still anybody's match here with uh, four to go. And we're at 195. And we'll check the uh, wrestler for Boyden Hole Rock Valley. That's Quijada yep. for Boyden Hole Rock um, taking on Bruce of Atlantic. Kevin Quijada. And Nicole and Bruce, here we go. Ten-point Atlantic lead. We saw, you know, Cohen improve a lot this yeah, year and yeah. uh, got a dislocated kneecap there at Roland Dyer, and he's been out for a few weeks, but he's came back this last weekend, and both wrestlers uh, 
go out of bounds here. We're going to come back to the center here with 15 gone in the first period. Quijada senior, Bruce a junior. Snap down there by Quijada. Bruce doing a good job circling, but again, Quijada, that was a pretty heavy, heavy, hefty, hefty snap down there by <laughs> when he had the, the head of Bruce in the mat there, but not able to come around behind it. Bruce quick enough reacting and circling in that same direction avoids that pass around there. As you can see on your screen, oh boy, Bruce got caught. Oh boy. Bruce got caught. Yeah, what's uh at the pin. The problem, uh, the problem is when you shoot in like that and you keep your arms out, he just double underhooked him and took him right to his back. So well we've got a duel now. 32-28. Molden with a pit at 82. Quijada with a pit at 95 for the Night Hawks. And we've got 220, 285, and 106 to go. And Boyd Hall Rock Valley now has closed the Atlantic lead at 32 to 20. 32 28 Trojans by four. If Atlantic wants to move on, they're going to have to get some big points here. Here is. It's going to be Masson. Masson of Boyd and Hall Rock. Mundor for Atlantic. Mundor. Again, Masson with a lot more length and height here. Yeah, he's a tall. Yeah. Tall kid, both seniors, two on one there for Mundorf on the right side of Masson. But right away, Masson goes under hook on that other side, kind of front headlock on Mundorf there. Mundorf bails out of it, and they're separated here in the middle. Collar tie now, separation. 30 gone here in the first period. Two on one now on the left side of Masson here by Mundorf. Mundorf tries to switch off that single and Masson turns in that same direction, gets that leg out of trouble there. Left collar tie now by Mundorf. Separation. Mundorf with an elbow pass attempt there, but no, uh, didn't lower level or anything, grab that leg. Close again. And Masson really shoots in on a double. Catches uh, Mundorf going backwards, and Mundorf can't backpedal fast enough, and Masson uh, basically takes him down. Double leg there. 42 to go now. First period, Mundorf with a knee slide. They're going to go out of bounds and come back to the center. So, 2 nothing here. Well, Miles needs to shoot. I mean, it, it's easier said than done, but... Yeah, but he's a, he really has a good elbow pass to a single there, and you see him working on the elbow pass, but not really lowering his level to get to that single. Mundorf right now turns and faces here. Masson, uh, Masson uh, trying to scoot his hips underneath here, pick him up, elevate him, return him, and he's able to bring him back to the mat here. So we're down to 20 to go here now. He's got the left arm of Mundorf out here, trying to tie that arm up kind of almost like a snow plow out there and working on a he's got a chicken wing locked up on that left side now continues to drive forward Mundorf able to get that lock out here Mundorf's going to survive here but uh, he's down two nothing Atlantic up by 4 32 28 back to back falls in fact all of uh, the Nighthawks wins have been falls Mundorf going neutral yep, here. He's going to go neutral. That's interesting. Well, he's got to shoot. <laughs> Even Coach Duff said neutral, so okay. he's probably on camera. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what. And it's getting to that time of the season, you know, where the wrestlers are going to be able to choose which yeah, position they feel more comfortable. Moss has got that height and leverage on. advantage, though, too. And yeah, I mean, to be in that yeah. bottom position, you know, he got rode quite a bit there, and and Mundorf continues to drive in here, and Masson you know, kind of backed out of bounds there. So, but Mundorf's got to be careful. He can't, you know, be in an upright stand-up right. position there because Masson did a great job there, lowering level and basically a blast double. Took Mundorf back where he couldn't pedal, backpedal fast enough and took him down to the mat. Well, Coach Duff said these two teams are comparable with records and the experience in the matchups, and boy, he was right. Lenny kind of jumped out to a good lead, but 
Boyd Hutton Seaman Mundorf Valley, yeah, he's got a single now. there. But it's see Masson really extending hip pressure there, and Mundorf has to know where he's at on that out of bounds area and make sure that he doesn't get circled around here. Mundorf with that right leg in. Gotta keep he's getting, getting sprawled out though, and Masson trying to break that lock out here, and Mundorf needs to drive forward, go out of bounds, and a fresh start here. Be a stalemate instead. So 55 to go here in the second period. 2 nothing. Masson with that lead. It's uh, you know, it's really a tight duel. <laughs> In the beginning, it kind of well, started out, and you know, they won three by pin, and that really brought them back into the duel and gave them a little bit of momentum. But uh, both these guys here, Masson, continues to back out here, and it's going to be uh, come back to the center here, neutral here with 32 to go here. So again, Mundorf needs to stay in good position. Um, he's shorter and stockier, and Masson's a little bit longer and lankier, so it's harder for just that much further that Masson has to lower his level, you know, to get that takedown. Two on one there by Mundorf. There's separation here, down to 10, 10 seconds to go right now in the second period. Mundorf pushing in here. They ended up on their feet that whole period, and Mundorf with a shot attempt there. Masson separates there, and time's going to expire. So it will be Masson's choice here, and I'm assuming he's going to go down that bottom position. Up two to nothing. 32-28, Atlantic holding on to a four-point lead, but a tough match here. Masson's got that leverage. Yeah, not a lot of movement yet. He's up to yeah. his feet now, and Mundorf releases Easy him three. on his feet here. And Mundorf shoots in on that double, but you can't get stuck with your head in between the legs there. You got to get your head off the side or directly in the chest and drive him completely backwards here. So back to the center. Minute 50 to go here in the third period. Mundorf continues to drive in here, underhook here, but massing a little bit of a level change there. Separation a little bit here. Mundorf with an elbow pass attempt there. And again, Masson uh, just continues to kind of step backwards here and nothing called yet. And finally a stall call on Masson here. We're going to be right on the edge of the mat here, but it's 3 nothing right now. Masson with that advantage here. Coming back to the center here and minute 24 to go. Miles has got to get two takedowns here to or take down and some back points here. And again, Mundorf uh, continues to work two on one here. Masson's driving out, going out of bounds here. Mundorf with a single here, and they're going to go out of bounds and come back to center here. So minute five here. His coaches, Masson's coaches, are saying, "You got to go. You got to go." And you know he's Mundorf pushing in here, underhook on that left side again. Tries to switch off to a single here, and it's, uh, you know, there's been one direction here by Masson, and it's, uh, he continues to drive backwards here, so. Another stall. So now it's a, it is a takedown here to tie it you up bet. here. And Masson shoots in here on a single, though, switches to a double. He's gonna elevate, take Mundorf down. 40 to go in the third period. Boyd Hug Rock Valley fell behind early, but they have come back strong. A decision would bring within one here, 32-31. Mundorf is up and out, 19 to go, five he's to two get match. A but again, he's got his head in between the legs yeah. there, and he's gotta get it off the side to be able to finish that shot. And Masson's just gonna continue to use that leverage and push back here. and. Right out the time. Five to go here in the third period. And it'll be Mass and a Boyd and Holrock with a 5 2 decision over Mundorf here at 220 pounds. Well, it's going to come down to the last two. And it's 32 31 Atlantic by one with Sorensen coming up at 285. A pin by Sorensen would clinch it for the Trojans. And don't put it past him. <laughs> The sophomore 285 pounder has really come on, and he gets a pin, then the Trojans will clinch it. But Boyd Hole Rock Valley's been tough with these upper weights. 
Yeah, it looks like uh, it's going to be Garcia. Now, he looks Garcia. like an equally, equally as strong young man as Evan Sorensen. Here we go. Yeah. Atlantic up 32-31 with two matches to go. Two on one there um, by Garcia. Sorensen now with a low single attempt there, separation. Trying an underhook there on the left side and Garcia doing a good job with the two on one on the one side of Sorensen. Sorensen nice able to leg trip him yeah. down here. Right away works on peeling that wrist out, rolls him over, but he's here we go. Sorensen's uh Sorensen's kind of in trouble here. Oh man. And uh you saw Sorensen, they did a, a reverse cradle, kind of rolled Sorensen through there. So it's two two now. They're gonna stop here, and I don't know what they're trying to figure out here. Trying to figure out who's got who what for back points, probably. <laughs> They're going to send it back to the center. The official comes over to the scorer's bench. We know Sorensen has two. And the reversal. Should be four. Yeah, it should four, get some four, back points. Four or five. Yeah, there's, there's a big flurry of action there, so the scorer. It's five, four. Had to catch it. Sorensen kept yeah. him on the map. Yeah. And Coach Duff's going to try to help do the arithmetic as well. <laughs> so, but hey, I don't blame the officials. That was a flurry <laughs> of stuff going on out there. And maybe you folks at home can add it up. It's 5-4, <laughs> both on their feet here. So they're giving Sorensen an so escape So Sorensen here. got a point. He's up by one. And they shake hands again like it's their, they're both so <laughs> rattled that they think it's the beginning of the match. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, went from one on their back to the other one on their back. And again, Sorensen has to be careful. That kid, um, kind of a ride here. And he, Sorensen he rolls him over, but... He's got to be careful yeah. and stay in good position here. No points awarded here. Comes behind here for Rush two. He's tough. He's again. Sorensen gets out front. See how he hooks that leg. Yep. Now he's going to try to reach the arm of Sorensen and roll him through. Sorensen trying to roll him through here. Has to stay in good position here. And Garcia scooting out. So he's going to get some back get points back here. Points. He's oh boy. Going to go out of bounds, but had him on his back. So three near fall. And because he scooted out of bounds. So it's 10 4 here, but. The thing it appears Sorensen can get a fall, but he's got to be careful. <laughs> I mean, he's. Uh, this kid's going to roll you through yeah, here. Yeah. So. so 30 to go here in the first period. Sorensen has to stay, you know, back behind the shoulder and the hips here. Because when he gets out front here, again, he's trying to get rolled over here. Sorensen posts him, but he's not always going to be able to do that. Sorensen posting here. Sorensen continues to move his hips forward here, but he's got his arm trapped underneath. He is posting with that left arm. He's got to so get, he's gonna get some near fall here, and Sorensen needs to adjust here. Keep that arm like he did here, but make sure that he doesn't get rolled through oh here. He's gonna he's trying go. to readjust, but he's gotta keep his so three more, <laughs> three more back here. 16. They're going to move the score. Atlantic by one, 32 31, with this 285 pound of match at 106 to go. Well, Sorens is going down. He'll be down, and <laughs> Garcia will cover the top. 13 4, Sorensen. Sorensen up to his feet already. Got Peels it. away here. Back in the neutral position, you'll see Sorensen drive in here on a single. He's got to be careful here for a two-point takedown. So 16 to four now. Sorensen working out front on the left side here. But again, you got to stay back behind the hips, back behind the shoulders here. And he likes to come out front here. And he's goes to a power half there. Garcia, you know, trying to hold on here. And Garcia, as you see, grabbing legs here. And he's going to want to try to roll Sorensen. And Sorensen needs to just go to a half here and get off the side. He's getting way too high on top here. He'd readjust here. He uses his pressure here, but he needs to be chest on chest and keep that arm. You see how he reaches back now in between the growing. He's got that left arm. He's going to walk around the head here and get the fall. He's got a, a minute to go here as long as he settles yeah, in and it. takes his time. He's going to get the oh, fall here. Atlantic wins. Oh, 
We've got one it. match to go. Got a uh, seven point lead here. So, you know, even if uh, you got pinned at 106 here, it's a one point victory for Atlantic. So, Atlantic so did a good job. That's probably the most controlled I've seen him wrestle, honestly, yeah, you know, yeah. throughout the year of knowing where he was, not getting in trouble there. So here at 106 pounds, it's going to be, it uh, looks like Luis Tomas uh, taking on Braxton Haas. So Atlantic up 38 to 31 as Sorensen clinches with a fall. We'll rest it out at 106. Atlantic will advance to the regional final against Sergeant Bluffluton here in a little bit. We do owe you a station identification. It is uh, Tomas for Boyden Holrock coming out and he's going to take on Braxton Haas here at 106 pounds. Final match of this duel. Collar tie there by Haas, two on one now. Some separation, you know, uh, well, outside shot attempt there by Haas. Tomas looks like he wants to control that left side, that left arm of Haas there, two on one there, but Haas separating the shot attempt there. Now he's got a near side cradle locked up here and Haas is gonna try to trip him forward and take him over directly to his back here. He steps through, hooks the leg here, stacks Tomas up and settles in here and he's gonna be out of bounds. So he gets, gets three near fall, two takedown. So five nothing right now. Minute to go in the first period. Braxton Haas with that lead. Tomas right away comes up to his feet here. Tries to turn and face. Haas drops into that single. Takes Tomas back down to the mat. Dropping that left arm. And it looks like Haas is gonna try to roll him through here for a tilt. But he's gonna settle in here. They're go for kind of a cross face cradle. They're gonna go out of bounds and come back to the center. 35 to go here in the first period. Tomas is down and set in that bottom position. Haas covers that left side. Haas right away puts that right leg in. Tries to reach in between the leg here. Tomas trying to sit in here, gets that leg broke. Now trying to knee slide out. Tomas a, a junior here for Boyd and Hull Rock Valley. Atlantic will wrestle second. Uh, they've got this clinched. 38-31. We'll see what Braxton does here to 106 for the Trojans. Yeah, he uh, tilted him over, got now. two near fall there. So it's 7-0 uh, nothing nothing in the first period. And Tomas is going to defer to the third period. And it'll be Haas here going down in that second period. Haas is down and set. Tomas covers that left side. Right away steps in between here. Pass with a switch to a near side cradle. Steps through, hooks the leg here. Releases that leg, now drives forward here, posts that head on the opposite side of the mat. Not able to get any near fall attempt here. But Haas is working on getting that leg hooked here and gonna try to drive forward. Stack him straight up on his shoulders here. Haas has got him tight there, but uh, the Haas, uh, Haas's arm is underneath the shoulder blades of Tomas, so it's 11-0 right now. Tomas working on peeling hands out here. Right away, Haas with a, or excuse me, Tomas there with a couple knee slides out, um, but Haas doing a good job tra tracking behind him here. And you see Haas with that right leg half in and Tomas kind of up to his feet here. Haas with the riding kind of with a crab ride there. Haas looks like he's trying to lock up that cradle now. Near side here. Trying to set him back and Tomas so far has been able to fight that off and reach forward but he's going to take him back no, over his Cody. knee here. So, nope. But again he's just uh, not able to hold it long enough and um, he just got to go more around the head than across the shoulders and Atlantic will go to the finals. 
106, Atlantic up 38 to 31. And Braxton has Hawkeye 10 Conference Champion 106 here last Saturday at Clarinda. Two time Hawkeye 10 Conference Champion. He has a chance to be a rare four time champion. You don't see that very often. Four years is a long time. <laughs> so I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe Chase McLaren was, but it have been yeah. Atlantic's last one. How many did Joe Weaver win? Uh, he had two. Maybe two, I believe. Yeah, at least, yeah. Dale Retallick was the first ever John J. Harris wrestling and tournament champion. I do know that back in the late 60s, his junior year. That's when this all got started. That was a good crew, too, to get things started. You see, uh, yeah, he's got Tomas is trying to throw yeah. here, trying to catch Braxton. He's got a double underhook now, and Haas doing a good job so far backing out of that. You see him lowering his chest down there, and Tomas is going to go ahead and separate there. A minute 35 to go here in the third period. A single shot there, attempt by Haas. Front headlock there by Tomas now. And Tomas continues to work out front there. Now goes for almost a near side cradle here. Looks like he's got the takedown oh, on Haas points. here. Mm -hmm. So two, 11 to two. You see Haas reaching back there a little bit. Right away, Tomas working on cradle there and, and Haas doing a good job straightening that right leg out, avoid that cradle from being locked up. Same thing here. Trying to cross face cradle. Haas is gonna try to come up here. Down to 40 to go here. And it uh, looks like Tomas maybe now Haas has got that right arm over the neck here and Ooh. he's trying to. He's gonna get his head out of yeah, there. Yeah, he's gonna get his head out and yeah. end up with Tomas so he's gonna end up on his there back. Go. There it is. Yep. He's got to walk the head. We can't get his legs loose. Now he's got his right yeah. leg in, and you can't walk get around the head no, there. He's got to get that leg loose. So uh, no, no back points awarded there, but 13-2 decision there for major decision for Braxton House at 106 pounds over Luis Tomas of Boyd and Holrock. And Atlantic will win this semifinal 42-31. to They had it locked up. When Evan Sorensen got a pin at 285, and that made it 38-31. And Braxton Haas uh, puts the icing on the cake with a major decision. And Atlantic now wins this one 42-31, and they'll take on Sergeant Buff Luton here in just a little bit in the uh, regional dual finals. So once again, Atlantic 42, and uh, Boyden Hole Rock Valley 31. And we're going to take a two-minute timeout. We'll be back with the more pre-match. We'll recap this one and get set for the second one here at 95.7 FM. A live video streamed on westerniowatoday.com. Back in two minutes. When you go home, you'll feel good about what you did, and you know you're doing it for the kids. If they don't have us, they don't have these games. Partner with the undisputed leader in Enlist E3 Soybean Genetics. With exceptional yield and value, neighbor-friendly weed control, and more new elite genetics developed faster, Stein can help you maximize profits on every acre you plant. Discover yield plus experience with Stein Enlist E3 soybeans. Learn more at steinseed.com. Stein has yield. Contact Trey Bricks at 249-2503. Gas prices got you down? Need a ride to work or the grocery store? There's public transportation for everyone in Southwest Iowa. SWIDA offers taxi service in Atlantic, Glenwood, Harlan, Missouri Valley, Red Oak, and Shenandoah. $2.50 each way, or $2 for seniors 60 years and older. Just call 1-800-842-8065 
or visit Swita.com to schedule your ride. The Super Bowl in Atlantic is a staple of Cass County get-togethers. From family reunions, birthday parties, night out with friends, and a fun date night, the Super Bowl has always been here. With glow bowling on Fridays and Saturdays, bumpers and ramps for kids, anyone can have a blast at the Super Bowl. Get the ball rolling on your next night out and get together. Call Dan at 243-4656 to book the Super Bowl in Atlantic. Mealtime from your Atlantic High V. Welcome back to Sergeant Bluff uh, Luton Elementary School where you play basketball and you wrestle in the regional duels. Atlantic uh, with a win over uh, Boyd Hole Rock Valley, the Nighthawks, 44 31. Quite a match. Boyd Hole Rock Valley made it close and they made it to 32 31. But Atlantic comes back with a fall and a major decision to uh, wrap things up here. And now they'll get set to uh, wrestle uh, Sergeant Bluff Lute, and we'll recap that first duel in a moment. But first, we're going to hear from Atlantic Activities Director, uh, Mr. Andy Mitchell, and uh, thanks for joining us here. I uh, hear your thoughts on the Trojans' performance here in the first duel. Well, you know, we uh, uh, listening to Coach Duff on the way up here talking uh, on, your, on your show. You know, and he said that he, he thought Boyd Hall and us were pretty evenly matched, very similar uh, wrestlers, has very comparable kids at the same weight classes, and Wow, was he dead on? I mean, that, was, that was a, you know, that was that was closer than 42-31. Well, um, I, yeah, the Nighthawks, where they got their points were pins. I mean, they yeah. got those bad more oh, points. Oh, exactly. You know, and uh, when, when they scored, they scored big. And um, hats off to our boys. You know, when we needed to come through, you know, we we truly did. And you know, now, now you got a chance, opportunity, to wrestle the number three team in the state. You know, class two A with uh, Sergeant Bluff and. You know, now you go out and just leave it all on the line. You, you got farther than than a lot of people predicted for this year, and you got nothing to lose for this uh, championship match. No doubt about it. Uh, Sanja bluff uh, third in the state, as you mentioned, uh, Andy, and, of course, I don't think they've lost a duel here as they enter this uh, uh, final tonight. Hey, let's uh, take a look at the other winter sports going on right now. Uh, girls basketball team, I think I'll get a score there. They're leading, but uh, we'll start with the girls, and uh, they've won 14 games. Uh, uh, you know, unbelievable. I, walked, I was walking through the athletic hallway today, you know, and up on their uh, bulletin board that they have, you know, coach has two goals this year. Finished top two in the top ten, or in the Hawkeye ten. Uh, and 14 wins. Well, we win tonight, win Friday, and I think we've guaranteed both of those. Well, you're you 15 know. and four now, Coach, because Atlantic beat Red Oak 57 to 20, a final there yeah, at well, Red Oak. Right. So that's your 15th win. 15th win, and you know, and they got Denison, who's a team they beat earlier this year. So, and that that was the conference game earlier. Yeah. So this is non-conference Friday, so they've got you know their top two, no matter what happens with Harlan now. And Harlan will you know, be. And that, that's hats off to. You know, Coach Vargerson, Coach McCready, Coach Best, and you know, and the entire, you know, girls program. They've they've played one heck of a season. Their their defense is suffocating. Oh boy, uh, it's fun to watch. Entering tonight's contest, and since the Christmas break, they're allowing their opponents just 34 points. Yeah. Atlantic boys have won back-to-back uh, -back games. Yeah, and yeah they, they, have, they, play, they probably played yeah. two of the best games of the yeah. year. You know, uh, on Friday night, beating St. Albert, and on Saturday night, uh, taking care of Perry. We came down and you know, it was a real com it was a complete ball game and getting yeah. everybody in and you know I thought we were on you know on it offensively and defensively that game and you know it was it was nice to see them get the couple under their belt and see what happens. This is the game tonight for them. It coulda woulda shoulda when we hosted Red Oak a couple weeks ago. Yeah, that was a great game. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> you know, end up being over. we had a nice lead and uh, Red Oak tied it took and took us by three in overtime I believe. So this should be interesting tonight for that game. So. Swimming, boys swimming going on in Atlantic Archery Club with right. the Clint you know, Roller. They're doing well. Yeah, well, swimming, you've got the boys, you know, quite a young team. We don't have any seniors this year. Wow. Um, they have their uh, districts coming up on Saturday. Uh, they, uh, they go to Johnston. We always end up going to Johnston for some <laughs> reason. They never send us to any other school. So we, we go to Johnston. Uh, we got some relays. They have a shot, outside shot, make it to state. So Coach uh, Junker and I talked today a little bit about, you know, he's thinking, he didn't tell me what changes, but he think about mixing things up a little bit just to give their relays a better chance. And then and then Archery Wild, wow, Coach Coach Rowland's team, you know, I, I don't know, they re seem to rarely get beats. And, <laughs> and they just get better and better as the year goes, the year goes on. So, um, 
Yeah, I'm looking for a lot of great things out of them again, and uh, they they are they are fun to watch. Yeah, and he's uh, going to have a full lineup here as we get towards yeah. the uh, end of the season. So yeah. uh, look out. But he's very realistic about. Uh, I think he said Prairie Cedar Rapids uh, maybe the team to beat and maybe unbeatable. We, I, I think we knew that from uh, yeah. th their middle school kids last yeah. year were unreal, and um, and I, they got some pretty good freshmen, but. Hey, you never know. If you get in a tough situation, make it to state, and they might get a little nervous. Uh -huh. Our kids have been there. They're used to it. Um, so hopefully hopefully, we'll bear out when it gets to that point. So Glenn Roland has, uh, Coach Roland has a saying, you make your medals in practice, and then on Saturdays you go pick them up. And that's, that's kind <laughs> I, of I've been the never case. heard him say that. That one is excellent. So, you know, Tom, we also found out girls' basketball playoffs. Yes. You know, uh, today they were released. I didn't think they were getting released till Thursday. Yeah. But they released uh, 1A, 2A, and 3A today. Um, and we will host Clarinda on Saturday, February 11th, starting at 7 p.m. Uh, and it, according to the brackets, we're hosting round two as well. well that's fantastic. You know, it, so yeah. they gave, I, I was, I, we didn't know how that was going to go, but <laughs> they gave us this, basically the second seed with Des Moines Christian being the number one seed in our region uh, and Harlan the number three. So um, Harlan faces Red Oak. We have Corinda. The winners face each other on February 15th in Atlantic. So looking fantastic. forward to that. You bet. We'll be there if you can't make it. We'll have it. But, uh, boy, I tell you what, come on out and cheer for these Trojans and Trojans. Yeah. Well, and one other thing, Tom. <laughs> Boys and girls. Hey, hey, there, there's another. Yeah, exactly. That, that's one other thing I want to talk about. You know, this uh, Thursday and Friday is the first ever uh, Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union yes. State Wrestling Championships. That's officially sponsored by the Girls Union. Uh, and uh, as many people, most everybody knows, our girls wrestle uh, with Cam, uh, Nottoway Valley, Griswold and Southwest Valley to make up SWAT, which is the Southwest area team. And, and the Valkyrie, as they're known as, uh, had one heck of a season. They got better and better. Yeah. Coach South does a great job. Uh, I think we had six wrestlers total from that squad. Yeah. You know, advanced to state and one from Atlantic. Yes. Uh, freshman Haley Armstrong uh, has, has advanced, and I think she's the number four seed uh, over there. Uh, so we're real excited for, for Haley and all of her teammates and Hey, they got a couple other ones I know have a shot for to win gold, too. You bet. Hey, so, thank you very much, yes. Mr. Mitchell, okay. uh, for joining us. Get us caught up. And, uh, yeah, the playoffs, and thanks to the girls. I thought they would come out later, too, but just yeah, released exactly. today. Was, uh, yeah, I yeah. was shocked. So it was, <laughs> it was great to see. You hey, bet. Hey, we'll take a one-minute timeout. We'll get back for more wrestling right here at 95.7 FM and live video stream on westerniowatoday.com. Outfitters Plus in Atlantic is making it easier for teams, coaches, groups, and you to host your group's orders online with their online store. Custom printed shirts, sweatshirts, all of your team apparel. Outfitters will design the graphics, post them on the web, give you the link to share with your team or group, and they can order themselves all online. No more order forms to lose, sizes to keep track of, or money to hold on to. Let Outfitters Plus set up an online store for your team or group today. Give them a call at 243-4379. That's 243-4379. Outfitters Plus in Atlantic. Cass Health in Atlantic, Iowa is a nationally recognized hospital and we are proud of the awards and all of our recent accomplishments. But do you know what drives us to be the very best? You. We're passionate about helping our patients heal and feel their very best at any age and any stage of life. Cass Health, neighbors caring for neighbors. Back as we get started, to Sergeant Bluff Luton and Atlantic in the regional dual finals. The winners will a winner will go to state duels this is Saturday in Corville. And uh, here we go, uh, Cody. Yeah, it looks like we're going to start at 120, and they've bumped uh, Aiden Smith yep. up to 120 again. Um, they have Ethan Scogland listed. We'll see who actually comes out for them. It is Ethan Scogland. Now, at 120, we have uh, junior Scoggle there, two on one on that right hand side, or Super left hand right. side of Smith. Smith doing a good job circling, uh, trying to avoid that pushing off with that right hand. Scoggle continues to drive forward. Now, underhook there. Smith with a fireman's attempt there, and you see Scoggle grab that near side ankle and kind of takes the push away from. Smith rides that ankle, tries to come around here and hook, and Smith does a good job going that opposite direction. Uh, but 
Scoglin trying to dig that right arm out that he's got underhooked here, trying to get Smith off balance, but Smith doing a good job continuing to drive in. Neither wrestler really advancing here, um, kind of in the same position now. Smith is able to get his head out here, taking his time here, circle around behind, puts his head underneath, going to try to come out the back door. Scoglin settles his hips back here. Still not a lot of movement here, so they're going to call a stalemate with 50 to go. First period. Both wrestlers in the center of the mat here. Snap there by Smith. Scoglin controlling that right elbow of Smith. Both wrestlers separating here. Again, Smith bumping up to 20 here. Gets that elbow underneath there. Tries to reach around here. Now he traps the left arm of Scoglin. Scoglin trying to come around behind here. Uh, is able to come around, but Smith doing a great job, job turning Smith, that face yeah. in there. Uh, he's got the two on. We got the right, our left arm of Smith tied up here to end the first period. So, so when you sized up this match early, when you got Smith moving up and Scoglin, we know how good he is. Uh, what was your thoughts here? On to, who's favored here, Cody? It's a it's I an mean, even either, match. Either it? one yeah. can win. I just whoever wants it the most. You know, it's tough giving up weight when you're, you know, you're going from 113 to 120. That's seven pounds. That's a pretty big percentage of your body. But uh, Smith definitely makes up for that in fight. We'll see what he can do in the bottom here. Going to be a caution yep. on Scoglin. We'll check that. No. I think there was a caution yeah, on both of them. Yeah, there. I think so too. Smith right away working on peeling wrist here. Scoglin hooking the left ankle of Smith. Smith doing a good job. No, Knee nice. Sliding. Switches to a switch here, but right away Scoggins going to try to re-switch him here, and Smith turns and faces here. Smith back up to his feet, trying to switch here, um, and Scoglin kind of lets him go here. They're right on the edge of the mat here. Smith working on peeling wrist here. Scoglin's going to try to keep him in bounds. Circles around behind and covers. Go out of bounds. Come back to the center. A minute 24 in the second period. Only Smith about got out of there, but Scoglin uh, had the just wherewithal to switch, stay with him. Switch and re-switch yeah. there a couple <laughs> times and uh, just not able to quite finish that switch. Smith's going to get out here. here. Yep, yeah, they're going to go back up on their feet here. So one nothing right now. Aiden Smith with the advantage here in the second period. Minute 12 to go. And it will be Scoglin's choice here in the third period to start the third period. See Smith down there with that head trapped a little bit, um, doing a good job blocking that wrist. But Scoglin's got the underhook on the right-hand side of Smith. Smith does a good job snapping, turning the opposite direction, getting that freed up here. But Scoglin with a low shot attempt there. Smith doing a good job circling around here. Separation now. Here, Coach Duff, 35 to go, you know. Score, score. Collar tie there by Smith, but again, Scoglin has that left arm of Smith tied up here. Smith's doing what he can do on the opposite arm to keep Scoglin from moving forward here, but he's really got that arm tied up. Smith able to get that free. Smith driving in on a shot here. Underhook there by Scoglin on the right side of Smith here. Going to end the second period here, one nothing. It'll be Smith with the advantage. Scoglin's choice here. Scoglin did finish third at the uh, Rollin Dyer at 120 pounds here recently. So, and Coach Duff familiar with Sergeant Bluff Luton as they came down to wrestle in that great tournament. I think they're There's crowds a, thinking Smith won a little bit earlier. Yeah, I heard the little unrest from the Warrior crowd. <laughs> Scoglin turns and faces here, and you hear Coach Duff let him go, let yeah. him go, because he 
didn't want a stall call and he also didn't want that arm tied up and Scoglin turned right into him, tied that arm up. Now there's some separation here. Wrist control here, Smith mm. with the outside single shot there, right on the edge of the mat here. Tries to suck that in um, and Scoglin knows where he's at and gonna go out of bounds. You see him pulling Smith's elbow out of bounds as well. They're gonna both go out of bounds and come back to the center. A minute 23 to go here. Smith has been close a couple of times to get a takedown, but Scoglin able to sprawl out. Smith seems to be the aggressor, though, in this match. Yeah, he tries that outside yeah. single there again. Now he's got that front headlock here. Again, Scoglin has really wanted to tie up that left arm yeah. of Smith. Now he's kind of in on a single shot there. He's got the hands locked up. Smith putting those hips down there. Smith doing a good job blocking here. Needs to wrestle on the edge here and continue. Did a good job there. Turning, circling in, and then pushing out. So it's Scoglin going out of bounds there, not Smith. Back to the center, 48 to go. Third period, tied 1-1 match here. 120 pounds. Atlantic beats uh, Morton Home Rock Valley 42-31. They led 32-31, and Sorensen got a pin at 285, and that sealed it. There's a shot by Smith. Yeah, Smith did a good job oh, there, but he's getting yeah. himself in oh, trouble boy. here. In a scramble position, and Scoglin's coming out the back door there and is able to get that mm, takedown wow. with 20 to go here. So Smith's got to come up to his feet here, but uh, Scoglin's got the right arm of Smith tight underneath here, now releases that. Comes up here and rides. 10 to go here. It's 3 1. Smith working on peeling out. Trying to turn and face here. And again, Scoglin just basically riding him out. Releases him here as time goes by. So. Scoglin wins 3 to 1. And it's a 3 nothing lead for yeah. Saga Bluff Luton. And Great. Atlantic will go to 120 pounds here. Dart Hansen uh, for the Trojans. That was a good match by Smith. It I mean, was. it's a, a yeah. competitive match. I um, mean, you know, and I know one of the things that Smith's wanting to do is get stronger and, uh, you know, quicker, faster, and everything between this season and next season. And that really is the difference in that match. You're giving up seven pounds and quite a bit of strength, where yeah. if you could stay at 13, you've got that advantage. We go to 126. We know Hans is coming out for Atlantic, still getting the uh, Warrior. It's going to be uh, Van Wy. Van Wy yep. for Sergeant Bluff Luton. So that is their varsity wrestler. Van Wy with an ankle pick right away to a deep waist on Hansen. Chops that left arm. Working on getting a chicken wing on that left side. He gets that locked in. He's got the opposite wrist. He's going to continue to drive forward here. He keeps it legal here. He's going to sit down. You see him sit on his mm. hips here. He's going to try to sit through. And uh, D'Artini and Hansen's in trouble here. Yeah, no he exposure to his back. And it'll be a fall for... 9 nothing. Sergeant Bluff Luton. Ethan Scoglin with a... 3-2 decision over Aiden Smith of Atlantic at 120. And Dalton Van Wy comes out and gets a pin over Hanson of Atlantic at 126. And it's a 9-0 lead for Sergeant Bluff Luton if they go to 132 pounds. The Warriors rank third of the state in Class 2A, undefeated in duels this season. Atlantic comes in at 16th. They defeated Boynhole Rock Valley 42-31. to And here we are at 126 pounds. Yeah, this is going to be, it's not Bo Kudum, so it's going to be one of the backup. It's a K, uh, Cassidy Craig. So Craig's going to take on Jaden Cox here at 132, and they're probably going to bump, bump Bo Kudum yeah. up against uh, Easton O'Brien there. We have stop even to play here. Boy, things went quiet, didn't they? <laughs> not sure. He's got uh, a headband or something came off, so it's going to be head. one point stalling for... It shouldn't be against Atlantic. He's given Atlantic the point. It's against uh, Sergeant Bluff Luton. Yeah, it had, had a headband in yeah. or on his wrist or yeah. something there. So shoe untied or headband in or something. That's an automatic penalty point there. So 
So it's Craig here at 132 taking on Cox of Atlantic here. Craig right away takes Cox down. Deep waist on the left side. Works out front there on Cox. Chops up that left arm. Down to a minute 20 to go here. First period. Right on the edge of the match here. Or edge of the mat, should say. Almost out of bounds. Cox tries to stand up. Craig returns him right back down on that right-hand side. Has that right arm underneath. Now he's trying to peel that right arm out. He gets that arm peeled up here. He's going to try to come out front here, maybe go underneath or reach through and try to just turn him the way that it is. And Cox doing a good job turning and facing away. But Craig's got that chicken oh, wing boy. in. And he's going to set Cox through. Gets Cox on his back here and in trouble. And Craig readjusts here. Uh, but Cox doing a good job fighting through that, reaches through the leg here, and you see Craig trying to uh, peel that wrist or peel that l arm off of his leg, but Cox has got the left leg, and Craig's able to get that free here, and Craig returns Cox back down to the mat here. Gets three near fall, so it's 5-1 right now. Craig of Sergeant Bluff Luton with that lead over Jaden Cox here with 18 to go in the first period. And Cox, you know, uh, broken down flat on his belly here, but Craig trying to go uh, hooks that right leg of Cox now, gets some separation here. Time's going to expire in the first period, so we'll go to the second period. Here, 5-1. Craig with the advantage of Sergeant Bluff Luton. Cox able to avoid a pin, Cody. And we'll see what he, he's going to take uh, up <laughs> here. Oh. Is that uh, Cox's choice, and he's taking uh, he's, up? I don't know for sure if it was his choice or not. Okay, but looked like he I'm had the red up. So. Yeah, he's a, a little unusual there. Tries but. to chop here and goes two on one on the right side. You know, comes he's a little bit higher, but he's also longer, lankier. But you want to see him kind of ride behind the hips here, and I don't. I'm assuming he's going to go for a cradle or pinning combination here uh, to start on top here. Minute 40. And Craig's got that advantage here and right away. Craig turns and faces. Cox has oh. got a, it's a legal headlock yeah. there by Cox. He did not have <laughs> the arm in. Uh, so come back to the center here and he's going he, uh, <laughs> to. Both officials were on that one, weren't they? Yeah, but I mean, he must have <laughs> maintained control enough. Yeah. I would have assumed that Craig was up. Um, you see Craig kind of balled up there and Cox right now trying to work, but Cox trying to get that locked up. Cox now drops down to a single here. Craig trying to turn and face here. And Cox's head is right in the middle of that knee. Craig does a good job separating here, trying to push away, push hips away, scoot, scoot, scoot. Gets separation from Cox and is gonna try to either, probably drive straight into him because you see Cox sitting a little bit on his heels there and kind of his backside. And yeah, Craig gets Craig's around. able to turn around, circle behind there. So 9 1 right now. Craig with that advantage, 48 to go here in the second period. Jaden Cox kind of balled up underneath their hand fight and tries to come up to his feet. Craig returns him here. Craig's got a control, inside control of that right arm. Chicken wing on that left side, and he's gonna almost go the opposite side. You'll probably see Craig cast to the other side and walk the head to the forward here and continue to drive forward. Rolls Cox over here for near fall, but Cox is able to kind of fight off that enough to avoid three. It looks like he's got two points awarded here, and five seconds to go, and Cox tries to readjust here, and it's gonna be Craig, it looks like. Mm as time expires with three near fall. So it's gonna be 12-1 right now, the end of the two periods, and it will be Craig's choice. So it was Cox that picked to cover. And he's gonna go yeah, up. He's gonna go up. He <laughs> thinks he'd get those tilt points. He's up 12-1. to Warriors up nine nothing here. In this third match, down to 132. Yeah, and right away he's got the. He go two on one and drives forward yeah. there, two on one on that right side and working on peeling the wrist out here. 
Got chicken wing on the left side, it looks like. He's working on getting that wing in the left side, and he's gonna jump this other side again and run. That head reaches inside the wrist here, breaks Cox down, rolls Cox over here, but uh, keeps it legal, but he's losing that arm. Yeah. Um, gets Cox rolled over on his back here, and he's the officials counted two near fall, but not three, and you see uh, Craig using his knee a little bit there on the face of Cox, and now, Craig readjusts here, chest on chest, gets the half in, rolls Cox over on his back, but Cox is able to keep that left shoulder up here. He's got to hang in there for about a bit and eight. Well, we're getting uh, close to tech fall points now. Yeah, it should be three awarded there. Yeah, is that, they didn't give it to him yeah, yet. Yeah, but he hasn't, there he goes. He let go of okay, that chicken that, okay. wing there. Now so. it's 15 to one. 15 to one here, 54 to go, third period. He'll be stalling on Cox on bottom there. Cox up to his feet here. No hand lock there by. He's got the stack. He went out of bounds. And you see a little bit of, uh, you know, Cox obviously isn't happy. It's been a rough match, but Craig's uh, got 40 seconds here to turn him for a tech fall, and it's going to be caution right, on Craig. Craig, and you see uh, Coach uh, Kudum there is like, just relax, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cost yourself any more than what you need to. And right away, he's got that left arm of Cox tied up there. Goes for the half there. 30 to go here, third period. Cox trying to get up to his feet here, and the left arm tra uh, trapped of Cox there, and he goes two on one here. 17 to go. Looks like uh, Craig uh, has the left arm of Cox again. And Cox doing a good job, kind of a hip slide there, not a knee slide, but a hip slide. Gets up and escapes there, but you know what? That's a... You know what? He, it's not a tech fall. It's a 14-point nope. match, so it's uh, four team points instead of five, or it could have been six if it was a fall. So Jaden did a good job there. I know that isn't a fun match to be in. But he balanced but it, it off his back, like you said. He did his part. And yep. And yeah, the be, Warriors, uh, they wanted a pin there, and I think Craig was frustrated because he couldn't get it. And uh, It'll be uh, Sergeant Bluff's choice to... Yeah. 13 0. Uh, the Warriors with the lead. They've won the first uh, three matches at uh, 120 pounds. Ethan Scogland defeated Aiden Smith of Atlantic by a 3 2 decision. Dalton Van Wy won by a pin at 126. And Cassidy Craig over Jaden Cox at 132. There is a open weight for Atlantic at 32. And we go to 138. And it's going to be Easton O'Brien coming out. And uh, Sergeant Bluff Luton opening up a 19 to nothing lead. They're third rated in Class 2A. And there'll be a match at 38 here, Cody. Yeah, this is going to be uh, Ty Kudum, the bigger brother of Bo Kudum. Um, he, they bumped Easton up to uh, 145. There so, we go. And Ty Kudum's a kid that, you know, I know personally and I've talked to Coach Kudum about him. And he's going to go on and he's going to go on and wants to go on and wrestle in college but you know he likes working with his brother Bo, uh, Bo there and then he's got a seventh grade boy too but uh, tough kid uh, four-time state qualifier placed as a freshman um, as a sophomore wrestled my kid and you uh. know ended up not placing that year but another successful year and um, and then he's you know he's a, a tough kid so Easton's going to have his hands full here coot him in on a outside single shot there Oh, well, and, that was uh, a Grambia try yeah, or what? And, uh, yeah. Kudum's got a near side cradle yeah, in on O'Brien. He's got the oh leg boy. locked up here. And he's going to try yeah. to stack him up. Tries to scoop the head here. And he's looking at his coaches. He's still got a minute nine to go here. And Easton doing a good job so far, yes, posting with is. that right arm. Really sprawled out here. Kudum now kind of comes off the side, readjusts, and goes head in the side here. O'Brien knows where he's at. You can see him kind of scooting towards the right side there. They're going to go out of bounds. So well, credit Easton there, Cody. Great, I mean, great job to know where yeah. he was at there. And uh, going to come back, and Easton will go down that bottom position here. 
uh, trailing two nothing, and it could have been way worse. Well, so fifty one pressure on him. Fifty one to go here. Gonna be a caution on Kudum. Kudum there. When you talk about Bo Kudum, he's gonna wrestle in college. Well, this is tie. Yeah. So we forfeited the four foot, we four footed Bo. Bo tied, yeah. And they bumped Easton up, so. Bo kind of went, yeah, at 38, tie at 45. Yeah, so this is Ty. O'Brien gets a point here. Yeah, he got an escape there, but right away falls back into that cradle. You see Kudum with that leg. Doesn't get two awarded yet, though. Um, there's there two did. points yeah. awarded, and Kudum comes around back behind there and covers, and. He's, uh, Kudum working on peeling out that right arm on O'Brien there and driving forward with it. And O'Brien doing a good job of keeping that down. So 4 1 right now. Easton peels off the half on the other side. Kudum riding directly over the hips here, deep waist on that left side. Time expires in the first period. So it's 4 1 right now. Advantage Kudum. Let's take a look back here as they get set for the. Start here, Ethan Scoggin with the decision at 120. Dalton Van Wyen a pin at 126. Cassidy Craig won by a major decision, 132. Bo Kodum with a four-foot win for Sergeant Bluff-Luton. And it's a 19-0 lead. And Easton O'Brien hanging in there with the escape now, down 4-2 to, yeah, to tie four Kudum. Two here. <clears throat> kind of towards the beginning of the second period here. Underhook here by... Kudum on the right side of O'Brien. O'Brien controlling that right wrist of Kudum, though, keeping anything from happening. Uh, kind of a slide by attempt there. Wizard by O'Brien continues to drive in, and you see Kudum trying to scoot his hips to the left there, but Kudum's got a leg underneath here, and he's going to try to pull that left arm out and cover, yeah, and he's able it. to pull yeah. that left arm out and cover yep. for two. So uh, about a minute to go here now in the second period. 6-2 right now. Ty Kudum with the advantage over Easton O'Brien. O'Brien up, going to peel wrist. Kudum going to release him here and goes right back to the underhook on the right side of O'Brien. And you can hear his coaches bounce, bounce, you know, get him, <laughs> try to get him off position here. And looks like maybe a double underhook. And Kudum's got that right arm stuck underneath O'Brien there. And O'Brien doing a good job fighting those wrists here. 30 to go. That was a super duck there underneath the armpit. Tries to come around behind. And, and O'Brien bails out and goes to his belly rather than, you know, his back and trying to fight it out here. So 20 to go. 8-3 now. You know, what Coach Duff's going to look for in this match is Easton to continue to score and to keep it with an eight. 19 a nothing, so match about now. Yeah, and Easton's had uh, three escapes. That's his three points. Yeah, this time expires here yeah. in the second period. So it'll be 8-3, Ty Kudum with the advantage, and he's going to go down that bottom position. Kudum's down and set. You see a caution on. It's been every time. Green because yeah. his his hands are not flat on his. Yeah. <laughs> he, his hands must not be <laughs> flat on the mat or something. I'm not sure what. O'Brien covers that left side. <laughs> right away, Kudum's up to his feet. Right leg in by O'Brien. Trying to sit back a little bit here. Hang on, Kudum. That's going to be a stall call on O'Brien here as you got to return him back down to the mat. And you see he's controlling that arm of O'Brien, and O'Brien continues to go out and pushes him out of bounds. So stall call on Easton, but he was able to ride him out there for 18 seconds. Comes back to the center and, you know, coot him right away. So O'Brien, you see, covered the right side this time instead of the left. Oh, coot him right away, stands up. O'Brien goes ahead and peels and lets him go. Coot him right away, under hook on that right side of Easton. A hand fight with that opposite side. It's a 9-3 nine, nine match now with a minute 20 to go. O'Brien kind of dropping in there. Going to try to throw O'Brien, and O'Brien doing a good job of still getting thrown to his back there. But uh, Kudum was able to catch that chicken wing, um, and he's got the wrist in the right side there. 
And you see him just kind of riding the hips here. He's going to try to go double, double chicken wing here. And 11 3 right now. Kudum, not a lot of action on top there, but not a lot Easton can do either. O'Brien, or Kudum's going to elevate yeah, that dangerous potentially there. dangerous yeah. position. And there's 52 to go here, and it looks like he wants to go neutral on his feet here. 11 to 4. O'Brien's points all escapes. And you see Kudum with oh. that kind of duck, yeah, super duck ahead. again, and just gets O'Brien back on his feet here in a little bit and is able to cover him with 30 to go, 37 to go here. He's going to try to work on a near side cradle. O'Brien peeling, controlling that left arm of Kudum out front there, releases that, and Kudum's going to go, tries it almost like he's going to release him back to his feet here. Down to 19 to go. Kudum works on peeling that left wrist out. Now he's going to go to a front headlock and try to throw him here. Comes back around the side for near side. Pushes O'Brien out of bounds. They're going to go out of bounds with six to go. So 13 4, six to go, six seconds to go. And there's going to be another, another caution. caution. So that's got to be three on him, yeah, I think. I, at least. So a point for O'Brien. I'm They're not gonna, sure. Yeah. There. Caution red now. Caution O'Brien. So I don't know if there's uh, what the deal is, Cody, but maybe it's, some different Well, I mean, we saw rules. that a little bit in the last couple weekends right. where they're very particular. Where they put their hands on where the Where they put position. their hands that they've got to be yeah. in good position and everything, so. 13 to five, Ty Kudum with the win. And now it's 23 to nothing in favor of the Warriors. They had a decision at 20. Ben Wye, a pin at 26. Cassidy Craig, a major decision at 132. Bo Kudum. He had a four foot at 38. They wrestled up East O'Brien at 45, and Ty Kudum wins by 13 to 5, made a decision. Now we go to 152 pounds. And it'll be Tanner O'Brien for the Trojans. Yeah, and it looks like it's going to be Hunter Steffens, possibly, is who they have listed, but uh, we'll see here. It is Hunter Steffens. So Steffens is Sergeant Bluff Luton taking on Tanner O'Brien. Of Atlantic. Elbow pass attempt there by Steffens. Both wrestlers working collar tie here. Steffens working wrist control snap attempt there by O'Brien. Snap re snap attempt there by Steffens. Kind of an elbow pass attempt there by O'Brien. And Steffens a heavy snap there. Trying to catch uh, Stephens with an underhook now on the left side of O'Brien. Snaps, goes to a single, mm. drops O'Brien back the opposite direction to cover here. Gonna go. Uh, I'm not sure what he's working on here. He's got a <laughs> half because he doesn't have any. I think he's got a cross face from behind here. him here, but uh, now he's working on a, the left yeah, arm, not a two on one. one. Yeah. To yeah. Peel O'Brien over there and reaches back that right ankle and pushes him out of bounds. They're going to come back to center. So, you both moved undefeated in duels, and then they're ranked third in the state. They are aggressive. Uh, they're always moving forward, at least these first uh, matches we've seen 20, 32, 38, 45, and now 52. These guys are always moving forward. They're, uh, <clears throat> you can look at the roster, for example. They've got, you know, twice the kids, a great number of, yeah. of kids and backup kids. Um, you know, and they're not, uh, they've got seven seniors on their roster as well. So they're, you know, fairly senior laden, um, similar to Atlantic in that sense. But uh, those kids have been wrestling together a long time, uh, same as what our kids have. Yeah. And, make each other better in the room and there's other partners that you can work with in the room so after the blood timeout we're back to action here if you're listening on the radio o'brien with this brian switch. can do here he tries to he's got the leg hooked here and 
um, Stephens hooks the other leg of O'Brien there, and O'Brien kind of bails out of it, and you hear coaches say, lift the leg, lift the leg. Yeah. And, uh, Stephens is a little bit high here. Again, tries to, now he goes half on the right side here, tries chicken wing on the left, and O'Brien pushing out there with that right arm. Stephens trying to get that left arm out, and O'Brien did a good job keeping that posted. Again, see Stephens off the side there, two on one on that left hand arm. He gets it barred up behind O'Brien there. He's going to try to reach underneath the head here. Time expires. Mm. Two First nothing. Period, so yeah. Two nothing. Brian's hanging in there. Sergeant Bluff loot up 23 to nothing. And Stephens wants to go back yeah. on his feet here to start the second period. Had that single leg where he took him back opposite direction that first period and then rode him the rest of the period. Collar tie by O'Brien on the with his left hand. Now he switches to the right hand, snaps down. Both wrestlers circling right to left, left to right. And it's, you know, some of the, you gotta be careful just not to push in. Now he's got a two on one on the left side of O'Brien trying to pull him in and they're gonna go out of bounds, come back to the center here. So a minute 28 to go, second period, two nothing. Stephens with that lead. Nice snap there by O'Brien. Gets him out of position, he needs to follow that up with a reshot or a shot. Front headlock there by O'Brien, trying to snap down. He's see Stephens has that right left arm though and is able to basically just trip backwards and, and O'Brien can't quite keep up with his leg was trapped there by Stephens. Stephens now just kind of covers the hips and works, try to reach across there. Looks like he's gonna bring him up, try to pull him in bounds and he pushes him out of bounds here and gonna be a stalling call on, on Green, which it should be is you know, Brian tried to stay in bounds there, and Stephens clearly tried pushing him out three times there, so. Well, let's uh, let O'Brien sit out there. O'Brien did sit out, and Stephens tried to suck him back, and O'Brien's just too strong for that. He's kind of in that same position here where he's trying to do the left control and drive over the head here and it's something that uh, it, Tanner's one of the strongest kids on the bottom and his base does a good job a hard kid to turn hard kid to score back points on and you can see him working on that left side O'Brien goes to that left hip circles the opposite direction now Stefan's peeling out both wrists here and O'Brien right leg up needs to continue to slide up here and come up and Stefan's working on breaking him down here. His time is going to expire in yeah. the second period. He kind of looked back at the clock and knows that he needs to hold him down here to maintain control. So, Well, well Brian is going to have the choice, and I would assume he'll take down, and that's going to be the case. And Coach Duff actually helped yeah, him with that Coach decision. Duff, <laughs> Coach Duff says go down. and <laughs> you know, Even though yeah. he's been ridden, it's 4-0, yeah. and on his feet he's been taken down twice. So it's probably the best thing. Um, don't know what he can do on top, but um, Sergeant Bluff's been explosive when, you know, when they've been on the bottom. Hey, Tanner got an escape, but he get a point Comes there. Comes up to his yeah. feet here for an escape, so 4-1 right now. Minute 40 to go, third period. Collar tie there. Minute 30. See a, a little bit more movement, especially upper body there by O'Brien. Kind of a slide by attempt there by Stephens. Head forehead to forehead here, and he he's a uh, Stephens really gets O'Brien off bounds here and you go know, back to middle. Blood it's timeouts, and we're going to take a, a moment here for a station uh, identification, and we'll also have a 30-second timeout here on 95.7 FM and live video stream on westerniowatoday.com. 
At Second Street Auto, it's our mission to get you back on the road fast. And it all starts with free local towing. Once you're back at the shop, we talk you through your car repair with a free and fair estimate. We do everything in-house so you know who's working on your car. Our Hercules tires come with free road hazard repair, free rotation for the life of the tires, and a free alignment check. And nobody can beat our transmission rebuild and repair experts. Brakes, tune-ups, oil changes, preventative maintenance, and service work make Second Street your first stop. WI Atlantic, a proud part of Meredith Communications, KS 95.7. And welcome back. We have action again after the blood timeout. A minute to go, Cody. Yeah, you can see some of uh, Stefan's blood there on the shoulder of O'Brien. O'Brien trying to get inside Ty here. Coach Duff talked to O'Brien a little bit there during blood time. Now he goes under, tries to go, O'Brien tries to go underhook on the right side there of Stephens and not able to get that underhook in there. Really a nice snap attempt there down to his knee and you hear Coach Duff say, hey, you know, you get that, then it's reshot time and O'Brien with a shot attempt there and Stephens just kind of circles around behind there. He's uh, trying to peel that wrist out on the left side here. We got 13 to go here. It's a uh, 6-1 right now and time's going to expire, it looks like, as he's gotten O'Brien broken down flat here. And so it's 6-1 advantage, Stephens over Tanner O'Brien here at 152 pounds. 26 to nothing in favor of the Warriors over the Trojans as Hunter Stephens pick up the win. And Warriors, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven straight wins. We start at 120 pounds. Ethan Skoglin with a win at 120 by decision. Dalton Benoit won by a fall at 26. Cassidy Craig won by a major decision at 132. At 138, Bo Kudum, uh, four-footed, won by a four-foot over Atlantic. They were open there at 145. They moved Easton O'Brien up to 45, and he lost by a 13-5 to major decision to uh, Ty Kudum. And at 152, Hunter Steffens with a decision over Tanner O'Brien of Atlantic. So now we go to 160 pounds, and the Warriors up 26 to nothing. That's going to be Ellington, uh, Sergeant Bluff Luton, taking on Masker. Wrestling at 160 for Atlantic is Brent Masker for SBL, Savion Ellington. Masker's a kid that you like to see, uh, or he likes to throw, likes to go upper body, working on. Uh, Underhook on the one side on Ellington. Ellington again. Ellington. It's Actually, Derek Moore was listed at 60. Ellington uh, was in the, at 152, so they probably inserted him with this lead of 26 to nothing. So Ellington actually wrestling up from 52. Yeah, you see Masker with a front headlock there, and yeah, he Ellington yeah. really did a nice job there. Grabs the chicken wing, gonna run right around the head of uh, Masker there. You got that shoulder right in the back, stack Masker up here, and Ellington was so quick with that response there. He's gonna settle in here, chest on chest here, and uh, Masker's in trouble here with a minute to go. Yep. So Ellington gets the fall here. 160. Well, it uh, goes to 32 to nothing in favor of the third rated Sergeant Bluff Luton Warriors as we now go to 170 pounds. Ellington, Xavion Ellington with a pin over Brent Masker at 160. And 170, we're going to see Jared Armstrong. I think uh, the Warriors have a, a lot of choices. In comes the Warriors have a whole bullpen out there in the hallway actually and lined up. And you see Coach Kudum come from right field with a slap there. It's like, it's your turn, you know, go out and wrestle here. So we'll pick up the Warrior wrestler uh, here. This is going to be more okay. uh, from 160 that they bumped up to 170 to run uh, Armstrong here. So more and Armstrong. Landing down 32 to nothing. With 70, 82, 95, 220, 285, 6 and 13 to go yet. Atlantic beat to Borden Hole Rock Valley 42 to 31 in the semifinals to get here. 
Masker, or excuse me, Armstrong right away yeah, in a single, single there. Um, needs to just go opposite direction, dump him backwards and cover here, but he looked like he was almost working towards a cradle, but he needs to finish the move while he's got that down. And you see him doing it more, doing a great job stepping down with that leg, putting all that pressure on, and Armstrong lowering his level, goes opposite direction here. Now he does a reshot here, gets in on a single on Armstrong. Armstrong reaches through the leg, across, tries to get across that opposite ankle here, and, and no luck here. So both these are could be a dangerous position for the wrestler here from this standpoint. And yeah, you're talking about a throw. A throwing position yeah. here, a lat drop. Separation now by both of them. Just under a minute, first period. Uh, Outside single shot there by Moore. Moore continues to drive his knees in though, and Masker allows him to get his you know knees sucked in there. So Masker or Armstrong uh, pushes his hips back there. You can see him trying to peel. They're going to go stalemate. So 37 to go here. Armstrong and Moore are going to come back to the center. Armstrong was in on that outside single. Moore did a great job stepping down getting out of that position um, and allow, n allowing no points to be scored against him. Armstrong now switches to that single again, uh, goes the nice opposite double. direction, is able to finish that. Continue to drive forward here, 16 to go. Comes a cross face. He's gonna go power oh, half yeah. now on the left side here. And more able to come up to his knees here. Six seconds, he needs to ride him out to finish his period. With the two nothing, there's no use of getting uh, too high and out of position here, so. Well, Armstrong went for the double, eventually worked up the ladder and got the single, gets the points. And, he, and that time he didn't wait. He just no, dumped he it right yeah. away. And <laughs> that's what you need to do is just finish shots. Armstrong goes down here right away. Switch attempt there. Moore doing a good job turning and facing. Armstrong back up to his feet here. Goes to a single. Armstrong does a good job sprawling. Needs to reach back, peel those hands off. Gets those hands peeled. He's gonna try to go near side cradle here. Got the head in the side. Not able to roll him over here, but he's got the leg locked up here. He's gonna stack more up here. Now he's gonna get his hands locked. I'm gonna stack go. more up here. He's got it tight, he got it. So it is Armstrong with that fall. Um, and that didn't start with the head necessarily, started with the leg. Able to kind of ball him up, reach over that head, and then lock those hands and roll him over. So Atlanta gets uh, six points, now down 32 to six. We start at 20. We're through 170. We go to 182, and Brendan Casey comes out for the Trojans. Now we'll see who's in the hallway uh, for <laughs> Sergeant Bluff Luton. Coach Kudum saying, who's this? Yeah. Who's this kid out there? <laughs> Here he comes. And... Uh, <laughs> A big roster for the uh, Warriors. But Jared Armstrong gets the Trojans on the board at 32 to 6 with that uh, fall over Derek Moore in two minutes and 34 seconds. Cody, this here is, to go uh, 182. Mason Streck. Yep. Streck and Casey. So Casey with the elbow pass there. Streck kind of backing up a little bit. Uh, Casey continued to drive in here. Streck with a shot attempt there. Casey continues go forward here. Casey with the elbow pass to a single on Streck. Switches to double, trips him down, goes backwards. He's gonna go cross face cradle right now. Uh, tries to get that arm locked up. Streck did a good job dropping that wrist. He's got the cradle locked up now and he's gonna sit backwards he here. It. See Casey using that foot, trying to kick that leg away. He needs to get that near knee in the side though and head in the temple and get both shoulders exposed. He still has plenty of time here to readjust. A minute 20 to go here, but you can see that Streck's shoulder is not clear to closing. He releases that for a three-point near fall. Works on peeling out a wrist, but he's right on the edge of the mat, and they're going to go out of bounds. Come back to the center here with a minute two to go. Streck is listed. They're number one 82-pounder. They've got a number of, a lot of depth. <laughs> behind each weight class. Streck is uh, Ryan Galinsky is his backup, just a freshman, but 
Trojans got on the board with Jared Armstrong here in Casey. Yeah, it's doing a well, Cody. Strack with a switch attempt there, and Casey right away who tries to lock up that cradle, yeah. but again he finds himself get that in leg a out. bad position here. Strack able to. He's got that ankle, that leg here. He can't quite circle no. towards Casey's hip zone. It'd probably be a stalemate. 30 to go, 35 to go here. First period, 5 0. Casey with that advantage and probably needs to be a stalemate as neither wrestler is advancing. There it is. Finally. finally call a stalemate. <laughs> 20 to go now. So he looks Strzok, up at you. Strzok will go uh, back down that bottom position and. <laughs> Get a fresh start here. Strex down the set. Casey covers that right side. It's going to be a caution yeah. on Strex. A little bit of a, a jump there. Casey right away. You can hear his coaches. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> they know the cradle's coming and they're like uh, expand out. So Casey tries digging that arm out, but right ah, away Strex comes up yeah. and turns and faces here and. Casey drives forward here, but uh, you know, gave him an escape there with a short period of time here. So, Casey so five to one. Atlantic's choice here, and Casey's going to go down that bottom position to start the second period. Casey right away released. Uh, nice Turns job. and faces here, yeah. so they're just going to call it a reversal. It was fast enough. Even though there's a little bit of separation, Casey right away reached for that single. And uh, see Casey wanting to work on that uh, cross face cradle there. Breaks that arm, chops that arm in, reaches across the face, you know, but uh, not having any success with that. Coaches have obviously warned him that that's coming and don't get caught in that. And I wouldn't be surprised if you don't go too far here and you're gonna see a stall call on bottom as uh, there's not a lot of movement other than fighting the advances of Casey there on top. So well, he's not getting to his base at all. And, and Casey trying to peel that right arm yeah. out. And, and he did last time when he was able to, Streck was able to, you know, ex turn and escape right away there. And yeah, it's still. And again, Streck just uh, kind of laying on that opposite hand there and now he gets Casey's hips a little bit low there but Streck comes out front here and Casey tries to drop that cross face in now reaches inside the wrist here again Streck is broken down flat here Casey wants to go opposite side here and it'll be a stall call with 32 to go on Streck from Sergeant Bluff Luton Kind of a power half there. And again, Streck just kind of balled up, elbows in and flat on the mat. Not a lot of movement. You see Casey kind of moving from side to side, trying to peel the arm out. Now Streck uh, tries to come up here. Casey rides that ankle and Streck's gonna go out of bounds and come back to the center, so. 7-1 Brennan here with seven seconds to go through a second period. And it'll be Streck is down and set. They're going to be a caution again. <laughs> um, I think his arm hair is across the line. <laughs> well, I tell you, these guys well, are here for a reason, Cody. Yeah, I mean, we, we've seen it the last couple of weeks where they're very particular. Yeah. And, you know, when they get to state, yeah. they need to know yeah, that it's got to be absolutely correct. How long they can get away with holding an ankle and things like that. So it's uh, Streck's choice here, and he wants to go neutral. 7-1, Casey on top. Again, Casey yeah, tries to drive into that it. ankle. Just tries to switch to double there. Streck trying to go out of bounds. Casey's able to cover. Right away, Streck kind of balls up there. So it's 9-1 now. So it is a major decision at this point, but you're going to want to score more points than that. You need to continue to work. And again, Streck is a... Well, he's hard to work with on the bottom. You well, want to try just, to get till points, Just Cody. goes opposite I mean, <laughs> direction of everything that you want to do. And Casey says, let's go neutral. There you go. Give him a point here. And so Casey continues to drive forward and Strzok continues to, you know, kind of back up and fight those positions off here. And 
Casey continues to push in here and it's gonna be another stall call here. So that's gotta be a point. That should be one. Should be 11 to two. Uh, yeah, the, the scoreboard didn't uh, react to the, uh, there you go, one red, there you go, 11 to two. It's so intended to, the officials coming over here. And yeah, the, I think he gave it yeah, to red and it should yeah. have been to green because green was stalling. Well, you should give it to Casey. He's the red band, so it's 10 to 2. Again, you see Streck a little bit more advanced there, but still continues to circle and, you know, basically fight off shot attempts. And Casey with an underhook there, elbow pass now. His coaches are his coaches are you know saying two on one you know and again Casey's he's trying everything he can and Cody. yeah shot attempts there and uh, Streck with a low single shot attempt there and Casey tries to break that down and catches Streck on his hips reaches across the thigh there yeah. 29 to go yeah. here and Casey's yeah. able to take him down here so 12 to 10 point match here and. Again, he's going to let him up here and go. Again, Casey, you know, not getting any clearance there or takedowns, but he does give him one there, and they're going to go out of bounds here with eight to go. So 12 to three. And he's uh, not a super exciting match. You know, by any means, but a 12-3 yeah. advantage for Brendan Casey there. So major decision for him. And 32-10, uh, to 10, Atlantic back-to-back -back wins with Armstrong with a pit over Derek Moore at 70. And now Brendan Casey wins by a major decision over Mason Streck. As we have 95, 220, 285, 6 and 13 yet to go. And it's 32-10, uh, to 10. Sergeant Bluff Luta. They had... Won the first to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight matches. The Atlantic responds winning nine and ten. So here we go. Here Bruce comes out for Atlantic. Cohen Bruce for Trojans. And this is McHugh, their normal uh, 195 pounder. So kind of an elbow pass, two on one there by McHugh. Some separation. McHugh with an outside single there, dumps the opposite direction. Uh, is able to return. Um, able to return Bruce, but Bruce with a real nice scramble. He turns and faces, just can't quite hold on to that leg. So McHugh, you can see, has inside control on that left arm. Going to work on peeling out the wrist on the right side, chicken wing on that right side, and he's going to try to run that. And you saw that with the last guy, and yeah. they're going to try to stack him up here. And Ooh, he boy. stacks Bruce up here. And <laughs> Man, so he's fall for McHugh here at 195. And that's what the other yeah. Sergeant Bluff Luton kid was trying to do. And this kid's got a full beard. I mean, he's a man. <laughs> 38 to 10 as Sergeant Bluff Luton with the lead as Atlantic had won two straight and the Warriors put a stop to that. Here comes Miles Mundorf at 220. Atlantic uh, defeated Boyden Hole Rock Valley 42 31 and out from the hallway at 220. Cody Weaver for this, Sergeant Bluff Luton. Uh, this is going to be. Uh, it could be Hoffman. It, it could be Gill. Hoffman. Yeah, it's Hoffman. It's Gage Hoffman, the senior, against senior Miles Mundor. 38 to 10, the Warriors. Yeah, it's uh, Miles with a collar tie there, slide, uh, elbow pass to a single, and you see him going ahead and um, circle in that same direction there. So Hoffman. Circles that same direction. Mundorf not able to finish that shot here, but Mundorf continuing to work on his feet here. Snap here. Tries to pull him down here, and Hoffman continues to circle. Hoffman, Mundorf needs to circle around behind here, but the problem is he gets that leg. He's got a cradle locked up here. 
is able to come around and cover, just needed to put his head in the side there and try to get that cradle. Now he's going to go same thing, and you see. He's got a hard cross face. You see him working inside that thigh, trying to keep from getting turned over here. And he's uh, Hoffman go. reaching back there, and Mundorf trying to settle in here, and no action really by either wrestler. Mundorf releases that now and comes back around behind here, reaches inside the ankle, riding basically on top of the hips here, tries for a cradle here, tries to break him back down. Hoffman doing a good job staying up on his knees, but his head's down on the mat. But Mundorf, on the other hand, you know, needs to continue to work for back points or a pin. Looks like Mundorf's about ready to come off the side here and release him, but there's a 25 to go here. So he needs to ride him out, uh, avoid that escape point. And again, Hoffman, you see kind of down there on the mat. Now back up to his feet here with 14 to go. Mundorf's going to give him escape here with 12 to go. Yep. So they're back on their feet here, two to one. Mundorf with a try to circle around behind nice. there, two points nice. there with two seconds left. So great job by yep. Mundorf. You know, you weren't sure that he was going to get to two there, but is able to. Mundorf's going to go neutral here. Okay. So. Mundorf again with that same front headlock that he's had. Going to snap him down here. Tries to snap him down. Not able to get around behind here and going to go out of bounds. So. Uh, elbow pass attempt there by Mundorf. Switches to a double here. Needs to keep him in bounds. That should be two. He got it. Two, they're going to go out of bounds. So it'll be 6-1 right now. Yeah, Mundorf says let's go neutral yeah, again. So they're going to go. 6-2. Yeah. Second period, a lot of time. Trojan has been strong in the upper weights here. We got to 70. Armstrong with a fall. Casey with a win at 82. Yeah, and I mean, at some point, you got to call Hoffman here, too, because there's been yeah, no nothing. shot attempts there by Hoffman at all, and he's going to back out of bounds. So Hoffman uh, circles out of bounds. They're going to come back to the center here. Another shot attempt there by Mundorf. Single leg there, going to be a stall there call. Sergeant it. Buff Luton and a takedown there for Mundorf with a minute to go. At this point, you might as well let him up and, and go again. Yeah. Continue to score and work for a tech fall here. 49 to go. You see he tries kind of a near side cradle there and Coaches are saying pull him in, pull him in, and, and Hoffman's laying their belly down, but uh, has been warned for stalling here, and Mundorf might as well. Another warning. There's yep. one from uh, Mundorf. Yep. Nine to two now, yeah. And Mundorf, Mundorf, look at him. I mean, he's just out of, <laughs> on the edge of bounds, and Mundorf has to attack. If he's out of bounds, go out of bounds, because he just continues to back up, so you have to attack. And Mundorf's done that the whole match, so. Now the coach tells uh, Hoff in a circle. And the official's not sure about the score. I'm not sure either. Uh, they're going to confirm. I don't know, but they shouldn't let the coaches. Okay, there it is. He's right. Nine to three. Nine to three in favor of Mundorf. See how quick he gets a takedown here. Oh, he's going yeah, across. There you cross go. Side there, there you go. You're right. Yep. It's good in there, Cody. He's got 11 seconds uh, so to get the yes, job done. He got and he it. You it betcha. Himself. Mundorf with the fall for Atlantic. And now it's 38 to 16. As we go to 285 pounds, the Trojan strong in the upper weights. Armstrong with a fall. Casey with a major decision. And now it's Mundorf with a pin at 220. He deserved that. He was the aggressor uh, going after it. Here comes Evan Sorensen, Cody, and uh, a big heavyweight coming out for Sanja Bluff Luton here. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, even if we won all three by fall, it's a Sergeant Bluff right. duel, but uh, it's uh, needed to close this gap up as much as you can. And 
Sean Zimmerman and Evan Sorensen. Here's Sorensen getting a double leg and a takedown. Yep, right away switches, but you see that roll. Yep, he's got to watch it. He's got to watch that roll, and he's going to try <laughs> it gotta... several times, but Sorensen's got to get a, ha a half in there, and Sorensen yeah. able to bring him back down to the mat here. and. Sorensen working out front here, rolls oh, him on his back. Oh, he's got a pin. He, he's settles. working for he's fall, Cody. He's in here, and Zimmerman's on his back and in trouble with a minute 18 to go here, and Sorensen doing everything he could do to squeeze and needs to just readjust here. Look, continue to look up, get on his toes the way that he is, readjust the elbow underneath the head and got tighten him. it up. So it's a fall for Sorensen there. 38-22, Atlantic. Getting some points here with Armstrong at 70, Casey at 82, Mundorf at 220, and now Sorensen at winner at 285 with just a two to go. This will be a Curry for Sergeant Bluff Luton and taking on Braxton Haas here at 106. As Cody mentioned, the, the Warriors have the match, but Atlantic has really made it respectable here, especially those upper weights. And 106 and a 113 to go yet here in this duel. Atlantic picked up their 15th duel win of the season with that win over Boyden Hold Rock Valley in the semifinals. Warriors unblemished. Still waiting for. I don't know what exactly they're waiting for. Well, they're waiting for the. Uh, yeah, the official, I think, went to get a pop and some popcorn. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, I don't, it, it's I don't the, know what it, the holdup is for it, sure. If it takes him 30 seconds, we're going to credit <laughs> one of our sponsors here, and we're going to do that right now. We're back in 30. Whether you're looking for utility. Hey, Creon, what do you like most about track? Competing and the strategy with each race. That's just like how Dad and the Seed Pros place different products on different farms. So true. Just like every race brings a different challenge, every field has its own challenges. The Seed Pros partner with each operation to ensure the right product is placed on the right acre. Unmatched year-round service with the expertise to help you win on every acre. The Seed Pros, with you from the word go. The Seed Pros, Mark Van Tucker, Gary Dinklet, Nick Knudsen, and John Becker. And then Haas, uh, Curry right away to an outside single there. Tries to go opposite direction. Has did a good job catching that, but uh, Curry right away drop, drop, goes across for that opposite ankle and, and picks up the two there. We're going to come back to the center here. Curry covers left side. Right away moves around the right, kind of breaks Hass down on the right hip there. Curry now has a half in on the left hand side. And I don't think these two probably met at the Roland Dyer. I think at that time, uh, Jordan was probably wrestling, but it'll be potentially dangerous here as Curry had that right leg in. Haas is able to stand up, and that's going to be a potentially dangerous call. Braxton Haas uh, for Atlantic at the uh, Roland Dyer. Then he's sixth overall at 106, so Haas was wrestling at his weight at 06. And we'll see what, uh, we'll check Curry here in a moment. Curry continues to work on that left arm of Haas, peeling it underneath here, and you're going to see him try to tilt him up here. He tries to readjust here. Now he puts the right leg in, and Haas right away stands up, tries to get that potentially dangerous, and Curry pulls him back down here, grabs that right arm here, 45 to go here. Haas sits out. Curry does a good job with his hips, you know, keeping hips tight there and riding position. They're going to go out of bounds and come back to center. Well, in dire tournaments, as tough as it's ever been, and uh, Curry finished fourth at this same weight class. Now, I'm not sure if they got to wrestle each other, but Braxton finished in sixth and Curry fourth in that yeah, loaded field at 106. Curry's a, you know, a strong kid. You see how quick he was. He just jerked, you know, Hass right back down there to the mat. Uh, Curry had a brother that wrestled uh -huh. four or five years ago. Um, and I think originally the uh, family is from Corning. Um, I talked to the dad because uh, my son Joe and his brother would have wrestled yeah. um, at districts when Joe was a sophomore. Um, and they both advanced on. You know, and it's 2 nothing. Curry with the lead. You also talked about Sioux Land. Uh, the, uh, had a good program and 
you think they can abide with Sarge Bluff Newton then? Uh, West Sioux. West Sioux. Yeah. Um, but Siouxland also has a good uh, wrestling program as well. And there's a kid that wrestles uh, for Simpson that his dad helps at Siouxland. Okay. Uh, but, has, but, go yeah. ahead. But Wes Sue is who could buy with Sergeant Bluff. Possibly. Possibly. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know the answer to that for sure, but um, potentially. So uh, Curry must have chose down here. Haas puts that right leg in. And again, you see Curry sitting and gets that right leg in. Now switches to a power half on Haas. He's going to crank that head. Got the right leg in, readjust his hips back here. Haas trying to stand up here. And right away, Curry goes to a cradle has that cradle locked up you see him pull that left leg of Haas uh, get him off balance here he's hip to hip here and he's going to want to step up with that outside leg drive into him and take him over across his back and Haas trying to going to be no back points awarded here but you know Haas doing a good job trying to get that arm through and get it posted Curry going to readjust here and go to something different with 55 to go 4 nothing. now Curry there had that uh, reversal here in the second period. Pass up on his feet. They're going to go out of bounds and come back to the center here with 43 to go here. Curry goes a crab ride there underneath that armpit over the or under the neck and around the back of it. He uses that right knee right on the right on the thigh of Haas. Um, so you see these wrestlers, you know, use every body part to control their opponent. You got the left arm tied up of Haas here, trying to potentially pick up the ankle, roll through here, and Haas doing a good job of hand fighting underneath, and Curry able to come around behind here and cover. Now Haas has that left arm covered, down to five seconds to go here. It'll be Haas's choice here, or yeah, Haas's choice here to go in the. Well, he's going to take down Cody, and we'll see if he gets his hands correct. Off the no, he says I want to go neutral. <laughs> oh, he so just changed he his just, mind. Yeah, he just changed his mind. Yeah, so. he went down and decided to. He's going to stand up and get a takedown here if he can. You know, Curry was able to get in on that oh, single, nice and you shot. see he's just so quick. Oh, man. And low on that single, he comes up in between the legs. He controls it. You see Haas holding on there, but Haas is in trouble right now, and um, Haas is going to try to roll him through here, but he's stacking uh, Haas up here in a potentially dangerous, but uh, he's going to step over with that left foot, hook the leg of Haas here, come out the back here, get his right yeah, arm two. through for a two-point yeah. takedown here. So... Six nothing now, uh, Curry. So two takedowns for Curry and a switch for Curry in the second period. He's got a chicken wing on Haas on that left side. And he's, you know, trying to suck him back here, trying to keep him broke down here. You see him circling towards the left here, putting that pressure on Haas's right arm. Haas is, comes up to his feet here. And they're going to go back on their feet again. And... You see Curry in the same type of takedown position as Haas when they both go down on one knee. And you'll see Curry go in for a shot there. Haas tries to uh, front headlock, block that a little bit, snap the head a little bit. Both wrestler uh, in pretty good position here from a neutral standpoint. Curry now gets his head in, he's got the position there against the ear of Haas and against the shoulder to prevent Haas from shooting in at all. Uh, so kind of a block there by Curry. 25 to go here. Underhook there by Curry on the right side of Haas. He's circling opposite direction there. Now he's gonna try to separate a little bit, come back on their feet here. You see Haas drop down to a foot. Curry's gonna do the same thing, come back up to their feet. Seven to go here, so it's a 6-1 match here. and That's how it ends. Curry with the win. And a 41-22 Warriors with one match to go. And that is at 113 pounds here, Cody. We'll see who they bring out here. McCurry, Jace Curry wins over Haas.
Now here we go. Looks like it's going to be a Coke and Chon for Sergeant Bluff Luton and Hass, Josh Hass for Atlantic. Uh, right, a nice single there. We're trying to elevate that. Switches to a double. Takes Hass down right on the edge of the mat here, and they're going to go out of bounds. So Hass right away comes back to the center. And the Sergeant Bluff crowd's getting rowdy. Uh, <laughs> but I've been in it before where we've been rowdy too. So it's what comes around goes around sometimes. Hass trying to, you know, he's got a decent base build up here. And they both, they all kind of like this move where they go two on one, peel the wrist out, release there by Kokanchan and Hass is back up to his feet here. Two on one there by the right arm of Hass is controlled here and he'll probably try a trip with that left leg or drop to a single leg. Some separation there. Now he switches to a double, comes up in between here. You see Hass trying to do a seat belt there, but his arms are free. So he's gonna try to come up in between the legs, push that over the head. He saw him trying yeah. to push that right thigh over the head. Um, and he's got 44 to finish it here, and Hass needs to. <laughs> he's looking at his coaches like, how do I do this again? <laughs> yeah, I know Hass I've is... practiced it, but this is real life situation. But so, For those uh, who are able to view it, you can see this situation, but Hass had his head to the mat and his legs up in the air with Coach yeah, I mean, and Sean. And Coach and Sean kind of came out the yeah. back there, and but not able. Has did a good job squeezing those thighs, you know, and getting caught there. But he's in on a single now. See Hass with all that hip pressure, and what we've seen so far is those guys know when to go opposite direction. Hass working on almost getting him down, getting in good position here. Two to one. Coke and Sean with the lead. And you see, again, Atlantic driving in forward, but again, you can't get too aggressive doing that because you leave yourself open for shots when you try pushing in like that. And be about one more time and it's gonna be a stall yeah. call, I would guess. The time's gonna expire here in the first period, so two one. Cooker Chad is gonna defer. Pass going down, down by one. Right away, deep waist on the right side, and he's got that wrist of Haas. Now he goes, uh, comes up to his feet here. Haas is able to get that escape, so it's 2-2 now. Tied match, and right away, Kokanchan goes to a, a single there, but Haas is able to almost come around behind here, use all his weight here, break him down, and able to take him down here. So it's 4-2 right now. Pass puts that right leg in, now puts the left leg in. Gonna try to sprawl him out a little bit here and goes inside the wrist there. Minute 20 to go here. And Hass needs to extend those legs out and lift that upper body out and break uh, Kokanchan down on his flat on his belly here. So he's able to turn him here. He's trying to power half here, but there's too much strength in the shoulders there and the hands. There he goes. Now he needs to come forward here. Ah, he's getting the count. He needs to just continue to walk forward and settle here. Lift the head up. See, he reaches back for that head. Yep. So it's uh, Yeah, he's got it tighter, Cody. Pass, maybe yes. hits the pin here. He came from behind to do it. And he did. <laughs> 41-28 will be your final. Sergeant Bluff Luton with the win, but Atlantic really kept it going later on in the map. They fell down early, and we'll talk about that here in our recap. We're going to take a two-minute break. We'll recap this one and the first one here at Sergeant Bluff Luton. The Trojans split. They beat Boyden Holbrook Valley in the semifinals and fall to Sergeant Bluff Luton 41-28 for a trip to the state dual tournament. Back in two minutes. With 
After years of wondering why I see more runners than other athletes, I figured it out. Well, a sophomore hurdler explained it to me. This is Dr. Fritz Beyer of Body Basics Chiropractic, and he told me since my hips started acting up, I lost one second from my time. One second in a 55-second race is less than 2%, but he knew it instantly because the stopwatch told him. In other sports, there's not a stopwatch to tell you when the nagging injury takes 2% from you. To make sure you're giving your 100%, call 254-BODY to get your body back to the basics. Locally owned hometown bank. Their staff includes First members Winnie of Bank is the longest standing locally owned bank in Atlanta. And as such, we take pride First in how we Winnie serve our community. For generations, school. we have been involved with our customers and their families by getting involved in community events and by supporting technology and teaching financial literacy in our schools. You'll also see our support of athletics on the scoreboards at home events. It's this involvement that allows us to know our customers and their families for generations. First Winnie Bank, the only bank you'll ever need. Member FDI. I see. Olson's Outdoor Power is your one-stop service and equipment shop for all things outdoor. We sell the best power sports products in the business from Polaris, Can-Am, Sea-Doo, and Ski-Doo, trailers to tackle any job from H&H, Triton, and Wilson, and we continue to lead the way in lawn and garden equipment with great products from x Dixie Chopper, Husqvarna, Cub Cadet, Steel, and Echo. Add factory train technicians in two locations, and it's easy to see why Olson's Outdoor Power is the leader in all things outdoor. Olson's Outdoor Power, your one-stop service and equipment shop with locations in Atlantic and Carroll. When you go home, you'll feel good about what you did, and you know, you're know you doing it for the kids. If they don't have us, they don't have these games. The Warriors to celebrate. Final 41-28, so Sergeant Bluff Luton with the uh, win here in the uh, regional dual finals. Atlantic won that first one over Boyd Hole Rock Valley. So let's take a look and recap. We start at 120, and the Warriors got on a roll. Ethan Scott, little one by a 3-2 decision over Aiden Smith at 120 to make it 3 to nothing. Dalton Van Wy for the Warriors uh, backed it up with a pin over Dart Hansen of Atlantic, and it was 9-0, made 13-0 when Cassidy Craig defeated Jaden Cox at 132, and it was 13-zip and 19-0 when Bo Codem won by four foot at 138. Ty Cotum backed it up with a major decision over Eastern O'Brien of Atlantic 13 to 5. And Hunter Steffens, a winner at 52 by a decision 6 1 over 10 O'Brien. Another three for Sergeant Bluff Luton. Xavier Ellington at 160, won by a fall over Brent Masker. But then Atlantic got things going. Jared Armstrong defeated Derek Moore of Sergeant Bluff Luton by a fall in 234 to 170. Brendan Casey to 182, won by a 12-3 major decision over Mason Streck. Atlantic had 10 straight. Garrett McHugh then stopped that run with a pin over Cohen Bruce at 195. The Miles Mundorf and Evan Sorensen had back-to-back falls. Mundorf pinned to Gage Hoffman in 352. Evan Sorensen then pinned to Sean Zimmerman with a fall in 56 seconds at 285. 106, Jace Curry defeated Braxton Hess by a 6-1 decision. And Josh Hess came from behind a pin. Cam Cohen, Chan of Sergeant Buff Luton, and the final score 41-28. We go back to the semifinals and the Trojans. They started off really well, but Sergeant Bl- uh, Boynton Rock Valley kind of came back and yeah, made it interesting. Uh, Josh Hess uh, had a 6-4 decision over Gabino Vargas. Uh, they bumped Aiden Smith up, and he had a tech fall over Juan Rachiba. At 126, it was Angel Gasca over Dartanian Hansen by fall in 48. Jaden Cox of Atlantic won by fall over Luis King in 28 seconds. Easton O'Brien won over Logan Seabreck by fall in 4 minutes 20 seconds. It was Brock Mulder, Boyden, Hull Rock Valley over Tyson O'Brien by fall. Tanner O'Brien won by fall over Diego Villar. 160 was Zach Struble over Brent Masker by fall. Jared Armstrong won by fall over Isaac 
Van Beek. At 182 is Jace Mulder over Brendan Casey, 11-2. 195. It was Keaton Guaga of Boyd Holrock over Cohen Bruce by fall. Regan Masson won over Miles Mundorf, 5-2 decision. Evan Sorensen won by fall in 259. And Braxton Haas had a 13-2 major decision over Luis Thomas. So the final score was 42 Atlantic, Boyden Whole Rock, Rock Valley 31. Yeah, it was 32-31 there when the Trojans finished strong. That'll do it for a broadcast. And thank you for joining us on 95.7 FM and on our live video stream at westerniowatoday.com. Next broadcast and coming up on Friday night, we'll have the girl boy doubleheader with Dennis and Sleswig and Atlantic basketball. We'll have the live video and the uh, game on the radio, 95.7 FM, pregame at 545, tip off at 6 for the girls, for the boys to follow. For uh, Cody Weaver, Bill Saluk, I'm Tom Robinson. Uh, good night from uh, Sergeant Bluff.